It's the end of the world as we know it. And I feel fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember a long time ago, we put out a video called End of the World Part 1 publicly. And then Part 2 was behind the Patreon paywall until now. Years and years later, finally, we've decided to let you pleb see it. But you could have seen it a long time ago if only you were patrons. So join the Patreon down below. Come on, just do it. You know what they say, the world only ends twice. And uh, this is part two of the end of the fucking world here on Deep Fat Fried. Deep Fat Fried. Uh, 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 listen, Paul, listen, Paul, 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 listen, listen, Paul. To all. Actually, I don't have anything to say to you. I want to talk to the audience for a second, though. Hey, audience, especially you motherfuckers watching the 10-minute preview of this shit that aren't patrons, this is what you're missing, stupid. Fuck you. Whoa. We got Davy Crockett, dude. Here, join us. They're missing being menaced with a <laughs> screwdriver. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by the hosts. No, they oh. got that part. Okay, okay but eventually got it. it's gonna reach the ten minute marker. Be like, God damn it! I want to see the rest. No, yeah. they're gonna be like, Thank God, I don't have to see the rest, idiots. Because <laughs> it is garbage it is so anyway. Bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, I'm talking about the, shocks. I can't I'm talking see about the, rest. the inner truth of their heart. Oh, whatever, dude. Not the outer, you know, uh, I regurgitations see you, my of their bullshit. Yeah, I don't think so, dude. So I, I've been forced by the other guys to tell you guys that Stevie is here to audition for my role on the show tonight. Yes, dude. Yep. So it's a showdown, I guess. They're they're looking for new fat beardy guy talent. I guess I'm getting old or whatever. Uh, I'm going to say in terms of uh, hair magnificence. Oh, I'm fucked. Stevie is winning. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit, dude. I'm totally fucked. I would say oh, shit, I, I, give, I give Paul's beard a... Slight edge there. You think so? I got like, I got like. I think Stevie's winning the hat game too, dude, man. But I mean, I just that depends on your tastes. Yep. St <laughs> dude, <laughs> look at this. Right in the right in a row on the chat, someone said Stevie is a cuck, and the next person <laughs> said Stevie is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Damn, Stevie, fuck, crowd at me, dude. You an awesome kinda, cuck, Stevie. Don't love. be fucking nudging me, Stevie. So, uh, you fucking pile the shit. I dude. see some people complaining. TJ, hold on. TJ, I was being fucking attacked by Stevie, dude. Okay. Let me put up with this shit, Stevie. What the fuck are you even doing here? <clears throat> Stevie, well, go ahead. Well, I was just uh, walking along, and my brothers are like, "You're getting on the show." I'm like, "Okay, fine, I'll get on." Well, we needed you because. We're talking about the end of the world and how to survive it, and none of us are going to survive 15 seconds. No. But you are going to start a clan of, you know, you're going to repopulate the world. Your seed, you're going to be like Genghis Khan. Stevie Khan, dude. Your seed is going to repopulate the earth. I find that highly doubtful. <laughs> My All I know about Stevie <clears throat> is that's not even what happened. It's not how you got on the fucking show, dude. I got a fucking call from Stevie at 3 in the morning. He's like, you know what? I'm going to jump off a fucking bridge unless he put me on deep fat fried, please. Whoa. And I'm like, you know what, Stevie? You were supposed to say that. Stevie, be quiet, dude. All I know is is that we fucking put Stevie on here so he wouldn't kill himself. So he's on deep fat fried. That's why. All right. Let me just, uh, let me, a lot of people wondering probably why the show was a little bit late tonight. And uh, I had to create this. So. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> There you go. Hold on, Paul. I know. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's way better. It should be. I, I can't quite get it pointing to Scotty. I guess he just doesn't think of big dicks enough. So yeah, that's fine. So you you literally the show was late because you had to make something to make fun of us for liking big dicks. Yeah, great, great, TJ. That's why the show. That's why the show. You're really fantastic. fucking mature, TJ. I know, right? <laughs> really fucking mature, dude. You think this is funny, TJ? Yeah, this is I a do. fucking joke. I have a very juvenile uh, sense well, of humor. Well, you know what, TJ? Why don't you, why don't you do this, TJ? Make America great again. I'm trying. 
What a nice Why don't hat. you do that? This is a beautiful hat. Look, this One is hilarious finest... fake thought bubble at a time. I'm trying to make America great again. That's what I'm doing. You're failing, TJ. Wait a minute. This isn't Billy the Fridge. No, sorry. <laughs> Dude, I saw we had uh, <laughs> 1,666 patrons. Whoa. Beautiful. Uh, just before the end of the world show here. How's that make you feel, Stevie? Makes me feel good. Stevie That's it, Stevie. You feel good? I feel good. You feel good that we're making money, Stevie? That's something <laughs> you give a shit about, Stevie, you greedy son of a bitch. <laughs> you got to give ma- that shit to Stevie, Scotty. You gotta, guys got to share better. Scotty, you're hogging the mic. I can't hear what Stevie's fucking saying, Scotty. You're supposed to be sharing the mic, Scotty. I like to take that fucking mic from you, TJ. You don't even fucking need a mic anyways. What? I don't need one? No, you don't. You fucking I don't even need a fucking mic. Fucking, fucking <clears throat> yeah, we, we, we need somebody to come in and just hold the mic in front of these guys, we dude. We need a mic slave. Yeah, we need a mic slave. That'd be good. Just someone that can, like... Kind of bounce it back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. You want me to just stand over there and instead of running the show, just kind of like move yeah. the mic between the two of you? Yep. Sounds sounds pretty good. It'll, right. that'll, it'll run well that way. <laughs> it's going to be a huge success. I, I agree. If I'm not that good of a uh, guest, I can be a mic slave for y'all. Well, I mean, the only <laughs> reason we need a mic slave is because we don't have another mic for you. Yeah, so true. that defeats the purpose. Very true. Yeah, so if we just eliminate you. <laughs> You're fired. You're fired. Fuck. I just b- got myself out of the goddamn job. Yeah, Fuck. Stevie, you fucked yourself, dude. It's about the only person you could, I guess. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> Fuck you, TJ. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Hey, you know, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't know what it's like so, having brothers, dude. You know, Stevie, you're That's still, true. you're still a virgin, right? You Stevie? had them sisters. You have to actually care about their feelings. Stevie's a shit. fucking virgin, dude. Oh, I didn't care about their feelings. Stevie, you're... Didn't you punch one with a cheeseburger once? Yeah, I slapped one right in the face as hard as I could with a cheeseburger. T- wow, T- woman abuser. TJ right. actually punched a, che- a cheeseburger once. Remember I, that, dude? Yeah, I did. Uh, what well, was a sourdough jack? Yeah, it was a sourdough jack. He's I like, punched it. This shit's trying to kill me. You're trying to kill me. And you slammed your fucking fist into the sourdough jack. Yeah, and I screamed about how no one cared about and you, me. And, and, and he took like a, like a 64 ounce, like lar- extra large fucking drink and just slammed it to the fucking ground and just left the building. Literally just left Why? the fucking. Why? Was that murder? Because he, he, he stages the stunts. He wouldn't have to drive anymore. Yeah. Oh. I was tired of driving. Because I was all like, we were seven hours from home and I'm like, let's push on. You know me, Paul. I mean, of course, that's what I want to do. And TJ was all like, he got really quiet. It's like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. And then he pulls the stunt. It's like, my mom calls me up. TJ just can't handle it. Oh my god, what's gonna, what's going on with TJ? TJ's in danger. You better stop. I'm all like, oh, we have to fucking stop, huh? What a coincidence, TJ. I, I remember that, dude. I actually really do remember that. that was what a loser, up. TJ. How dare you stage a fucking stunt to avoid having to get home on time? Yeah. What a piece of shit. Dude, I'd already been, we'd already been driving for like 15 hours or some crazy shit. I love how your stunt involved punching a fucking jumbo TJ, jack. You too. know, all you had to do was, you, you could have said, Scotty, you know what? I'm really, I'm not just going to, I just, I don't want to drive anymore. Fuck this shit. I'm not going to do it. And, you know, then we could have argued about it and then it could have been like, okay, we'll just stop because you're being a whiny little bitch. I didn't feel like the confrontation. I just, it, it was easier to punch a cheeseburger and throw a tantrum. You got to fucking have that tantrum card. As an ace. Oh, my God, dude. And you know what, TJ? Another thing is you weren't even fucking driving. Let's just be honest about that. Your ass was sitting in the back fucking seat on your goddamn phone the entire fucking time. I didn't even have a phone back then. Yes, you fucking did, no, you I lying didn't. sack of shit. I didn't even have no phone. That was the only fucking reason you even... smartphone technology. No, yeah, no, it fucking wasn't, dude. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. It was your fucking oh, first yeah. failed fucking marriage. That's no, Because no. you went to Ohio. Yes, it was. Yeah, but I remember when, but I didn't have phones back then, dude. Yes, you fucking did, I TJ. Did not. Yes, you fucking remember, did. Remember, because I didn't want to fucking no on the bullshit fucking phone trend, bullshit dude. dude i got a 3g fucking iphone okay and you took the phone from my from me one night to go look at porn and you yeah, realized it was around that same time no dude you yeah, got married much later than that no tj nah, that's so nah, inaccurate you don't understand you don't know i don't understand shit. i didn't realize t- that this is how the the world was going to end dude this argument this is going to be the fucking liar to that fucking point that ignites the fuse dude i just want to point out to the uh, audience that whenever scotty goes on his tirades he just spit flies everywhere I'm well yeah <laughs> i mean he's a he's a passionate shit. dude the, the the spit is passionate, dude. Suffering succotath. Fuck that shit, dude. You little fucking spit on you. It's the fucking goddamn shit that's gonna go that's down. That's why I dude. got my spit shield here. <laughs> the spittle shield. You got a problem with spit, Stevie? You should you talk. Got a problem with fucking spit? Talk towards no Stevie, problem. dude. I ain't got no problem. 
Stevie's not even listening. He's just watching the spit Stevie, fly. This is fucking bullshit, dude. You're going to fucking call me out. You're going to say I spit, Stevie. I haven't fucking spit in my fucking life, Stevie. <laughs> Whoa. I haven't fucking spit once in my goddamn life. It's a someone lie, Stevie. Just, uh, someone in our chat, Patrick, is saying, someone just slap Stevie, please. Why? Damn, oh. Stevie. That's all I, it takes. Dude, no. I ain't doing it. Low do it. energy, do it, Stevie. Paul. No, I ain't doing it, man. Paul, do it, man. Stevie could rip my arms out of their sockets, dude. I'm not, I'm do not it, doing Paul. it. No, no. All I right, know better. Right. Stevie. So, Never slap a man in a coonskin cap, dude. That's rule number one and to stay alive. Have you guys... Hey, Stevie, you know what? <laughs> no, dude, no. No, Maybe I'm not I, doing I, it. All right, all right. Have you guys heard of a, a thing called the uh, the nuke map? Yes. Yes. No. You haven't, <laughs> you haven't Stevie, heard of that, Stevie? Heard of it? I, I've never heard of the nuke You've map. never heard of the nuke map, Stevie. Nope. Why not? Uh, I guess I just don't know. <laughs> Paul, tell Stevie what the nuke map is. The nuke map is like a thing where you can type in any city in the world that you want and then type in how many megatons of a nuke you want to drop on it and then see what kind of devastation. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. like where like how many people would die and you know the the radius of the bomb and all that shit. All right, so we got yeah. one here. We got a nuke. On the way to fucking New Orleans. Oh, yeah, dude, let's fucking nuke it, dude. Shit, how right. big? How big is it, dude? In kilotons. Uh, let's see. We probably die from the Step tidal one: wave. drag the marker wherever you'd like to target. We've already done that. Already done it, huh? So New Orleans. Enter a yield in kilotons. Or you can look, look at the presets. Yeah, there you go. Because we can see the other can, bombs. Can we, can we do the? Uh, oh, I see. Can we do the fat boy, dude. Can we do the uh, yeah, fat? The Nagasaki bomb. Yeah. The good old classic. Yeah. The fat man, yeah. That's All right, we're doing the fat man. So, I mean, this is a fucking old school nuke, dude. We're not even talking about the newer nukes. All right, let's see what happens. Let's see what the fuck can happens. Can we move the it. target a little, or do we... Oh, I see. So yeah, you can, can drag it wherever you want it Where do you guys think we should do it? French Quarter! Right in the French Quarter? Nuke, nuke where, the French Quarter, Where's dude. that at? Down, 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 right... Uh, I think somewhere around there. That doesn't look right. No, it's right there. It says French Quarter right above... Oh, okay. Uh, there it is. All cool. right. Damn, I was totally off, dude. The French Quarter is getting fucking nuked, bitch. Let's do it. You guys ready? Dude, Nagasaki a bunch, of, time. a bunch of fucking tourists are just gone, dude. This is what you did to Japan, you pieces of shit. Oh. 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 Uh, not as... That's not as bad as I thought what? it was going to be. Do we got to up our fucking nuke, dude. I'm disappointed with that one. Damn, dude. I was I was expecting just... I mean, the French Quarter's gone. Yeah, I mean, well, most of downtown New Orleans is gone. Get the Tsar Bomba if they have it on. All right, there. all right, hold on. Here's the largest current French warhead, okay? That's yeah, 300 dude. kilotons. So let's see what happens if yeah. France attacks. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. France Hell fucked yeah. us up. France, you done fucked that shit up. All right, so what do these areas mean? So this is like... Um, Green. Which so green is the radiation radius. Okay. And yellow is the fireball radius. So, so that's like insta death. This basically. is just like everything that's just consumed in flames. Right. And then that what in the green is what's going to be irradiated the air for a blast long ass time. Radius. Right. And then that's just going to knock buildings over and shit with air. Right. But probably not kill everything. You know the thing that sucks? Kenner is okay. God damn it. Yeah. Damn, dude. <laughs> they spared Kenner. Fucking Kenner gets spared piece of shit all right that's not even the most powerful one though let's see there's the currently in the u.s arsenal all right all right so the biggest one in the u.s arsenal then yeah i think this this is the biggest one i see listed no dude you you got it you can scroll down oh okay okay yeah that's the sar bomba dude that's the biggest one ever fucking largest USS ussr bomb Ever fucking tested. Crazy. Ever dude. designed. The largest explosion ever on the surface of the planet. All right. Since Sar the fucking. Bomba. You guys ready for this? Yep. Detonate, God. dude. Boom. Holy God. fucking shit. Whoa. It had to fucking zoom out. See, now now I'm starting to see how the world could end with this shit. That first. Like, dude, we, we were nice to Nagasaki. Yeah. <laughs> like we, I, I always thought it was a really cruel thing that we did but man we barely fucked their city up at all yeah it was just a little fucking it's a little radiation <laughs> some buildings blown over look at this yeah i mean like we're dead in that fuck oh dude not yeah we, we're dead people in adjoining states are dead yeah yeah holy shit yeah i mean like biloxi is not dead but they're radiated as shit i mean dude wow fucking a right 
Let's try this yeah. on a bigger city. Dude, that's fucking insane, dude. Yeah. How about uh, New York City, dude? Uh, well, New York is so fucking it's de- it, like dense, though. I was I was thinking L.A. because it's all LA. sprawled out. Well, we could do that. Yeah, See, L.A. is of, huge. Kind of damage you could do to the L.A. sprawl, you know? Well, there you go. So, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, so, pretty much all of downtown L.A. All right, so let's, uh, let's see most what... Most uh, of the valley. Let's see what fucking Kim Jong's nukes could do there, because, uh, you know... That's actually a yeah, because that's actually a possible fucking thing. I know they got the uh, the the North Korea shit in here, North Korea nukes. Well, let's see. I mean, it's a ten kiloton. I mean, it's not going to be nearly as devastating as this, no. obviously. Uh, <coughs> not. I mean, bad, but not anywhere. I mean, that's going to kill. That'll kill a shitload of people. Not oh, only that, yeah. but you got to imagine it's not just going to be one of these. You're going to get five or six of these spread around. Yeah, he's going to spread this all along, yeah, along the fucking you, uh, but, West Coast. But you see uh, the firepower of like Russia and the U.S. I mean, that basically means North Korea is wiped off the face of the earth. And you've got a zone of radiation in the middle of L.A. That's going to like how many years is it going to be before you can safely inhabit that? You know what I mean? It'll actually be pretty short, short because of the, uh, you know, the the half life and. The explosion. Let's see just here. Like, let's uh, let's see. see this is why this is why Stevie's here, dude. Because I don't know that shit. Hold on though. Let's see what happens if we fucking drop the fucking SAR bomb on fucking North Korea. SAR bomba. I think North Korea disappears. It'll be gone. Well, yeah. I mean, most of like anything surround the, the most populated area of North Korea just goes <clears throat> bye bye. Goodbye. Basically. What so- about our largest like counter nuke? What's that? What about like the, the largest counter nuke that we have? The, like the, the largest U.S. one? Yeah, the current U.S. It'll probably be the Minuteman that gets like sent over there. The largest U.S. bomb tested is much smaller than the Russian one, but we can. Well, this is a bomb. I'm talking about like a warhead. Because that that North Korean nuke that we looked at was a warhead. Yeah. Not a bomb. So what do you want to see? The Minuteman, I guess, or I don't know. That's like the most common one we have, I think, is the Minuteman missiles. So that'd be the Minuteman. That's just one megaton. Yeah, so that's not like super devastating shit. That's just like a little quick, like, here, we're going to slap you with some nukes, bitch. Very, very strategic. Very, you know, just like <clears throat> fire a bunch of them at once. I mean, that's just like a little, uh, I mean, that's still pretty much fucks Pong- Pong Yang up. Oh, know? yeah. Oh, dude. it's gone, dude. What are you even talking about? Yeah, one like- megaton. It's just fucked. I mean, they're oh, not going to... Go. The, the fucking... That big boy you were talking about, the... Uh, what's that one called, Stevie? Uh, Batman and Little Boy. No, no, no. The... Uh, the the Sarbomba. Oh, the uh, the, yeah, the Sarbomba. That one would probably never be used unless you were just talking like the other country was just like, we want to wipe the other country out totally. Basically, it's just a show of power. Yeah, like, these, like it makes sense that the bomb is going to have a target like this because you're not going to want to destroy... I mean that there's I mean especially with North Korea it's too close to South Korea they're not going to want to drop a bomb that big on it. I mean those those types of nukes come out in the apocalyptic scenario of like everybody's like Launching. well fuck, mutually ex- assured destruction. And it's just like we're yep everybody's launching that that's when we're, we'll see those big ones. And fuck man like it wouldn't take many of those to just absolutely devastate even the United States dude a few well placed SAR bombas around the United States. So let's talk about uh, how likely this is, you know. We are edging closer to nuclear war. Experts are worried about India, Pakistan, and North Korea. So uh, this is obviously quite a long uh, fucking article. <clears throat> Just complete nuclear fucking winter. That's but here we go. This is, uh, this is the part that this is the real meat of it, I think, here. State use of nuclear weapons is more likely than you think. On the state side, there are a number of ongoing conflicts that could, in theory, go nuclear at any time. Increasingly, some regional powers are relying on nuclear weapons for their day-to-day security against conventional conflict, said Vipin Narang, author of Nuclear Strategies in the Modern Era. If they think that a conventional invasion is coming, whether it is or not, they may be worried that the nuclear forces that they rely on for their survival might be threatened. There may be what's sometimes called a use-it-or-lose-it situation. The conflict that topped experts' list of clashes to be concerned about is India-Pakistan. Both states have developed nuclear weapons outside the jurisdiction of the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Both states have limited capabilities, which may incentivize early use, and both states, though their public doctrines are intentionally ambiguous, are known to have contingency plans involving nuclear first strikes against 
military targets. That's that's one that we don't hear a whole lot about anymore. Yeah, the, uh, I the, remember a, the for U.S. A while, media really doesn't cover the India-Pakistan tensions. They did like, for a while, very though. Much at all. For a while, we were hearing a lot about the eventuality of nuclear war between India and Pakistan, and then it just kind of. But well, it, now apparently that's still there's a, more important problems though. It is the most Trump, likely. Trump, 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 it, Trump, 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 Trump. It's definitely the most likely nuclear conflict out there. Just waiting. I mean, basically, it's just like uh, something that says, "Don't fuck with me." Like, don't come into my TV's territory. got both mics on him now. Yeah, dude. don't fuck with me. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a news conference now. Like, uh, yes, yeah, Stevie, how do you respond to these allegations? You know, uh, I didn't do it. Then there's North Korea, whose recent missile tests have brought renewed attention to the state's nuclear weapons program, which has spurred international trade sanctions. The Korean War never officially ended, so North Korea is technically uh, facing the threat of a U.S.-backed South Korea, and nuclear weapons remain central to North Korea's national defense strategy. Some experts believe that the seemingly erratic behavior of the Kim regime is in fact strategic. If you're handcuffed your adversary on top of a cliff, dancing erratically near the edge is a smart way to exact concessions. That's true. I Fair guess enough. so. Um, so, yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, like, I, I don't understand. Uh, I'm, no I'm not really f- in favor of um, conflicts in most instances. But I I've am. Al- I've always thought it was just, just strange that, you know, we didn't do anything as we watched this fucking crazy, erratically behaving fucking country uh, develop first nukes and then... Long range you missiles to you deliver. You want to know why, TJ? Because America elected weak politicians. If we got someone who's not a politician in the White House, like, if, dude, if Trump had been there at the time, they never would have been allowed to develop those weapons. He would have nuked them, TJ. He would have killed them all. I just think it was so we didn't step on China's toes. That's we, probably we wanted true. to suck that no. China dick, keep that most favored nation status trading going. No, it's weak liberals who underfunded the military. Oh, 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 little China dick. Are you going to stab somebody with that? Should uh, I be worried? Eventually. Okay. Basically with nuclear... Not necessarily tonight. Nuclear-like missiles and shit. Like, it makes you invasion-proof if you have a l- enough of them. If you try and invade us, you know, like, invade like uh, invade someone, you and they uh, say, hey, we're going to fucking nuke you if you even put your fucking forces n- near our uh, borders, so... Get the fuck away from us. What happens when everyone just has the nukes, though? Is if you nuke us, we'll nuke you. You know what? That's why why we need a fucking Death Star equalizer, dude. America needs to build a fucking Death Star. (laughs) And then the fucking China and these other countries can be like, we'll do this. We're like, we have the Death Star, bitch. We'll destroy everything. Everything will be fucking gone. You'll be dead. We'll be dead. Everyone will be dead. We just need to nuke the sun. Nuke the sun. We need to make a bomb big enough to blow up the sun. Sounds like a plot of fuck a ba- you. The then sun. we've got the ultimate control. We're we're like, you, if you guys even fuck with us, like on anything, economic policy, sun. we're gonna blow the fucking sun up. So Trump will be like, we will destroy the earth. Dude, Hashtag like a, turn out the sun. It's yep. like a bad sci-fi movie, except like the sun is dying and we need to restart it with nukes or something. That was the plot of Sunshine, wasn't it? Yep. Oh yeah, that was the plot of that movie, wasn't it? Yeah. Although I don't think it was, a, I don't think they no, would do that, it with a nuke. But that was a good movie, though. I actually liked it. Yeah, it was actually it's an, good. It's an insane movie. Uh, anyway, uh, so uh, that's the the current big threats that we face from nukes. Um, you know, the article goes on to talk a little about nuclear terrorism, but kind of says it's not really super plausible. Um, yeah, here's a weird. This is uh, let's read about this because this sounds interesting. If a state uses a nuclear weapon, it'll probably be by accident. That's com- that's comforting. When you imagine state use, though, don't think of a red-faced Trump or Kim launching a petty revenge strike. Nobody's going to wake up one morning and say, gee, today would be a really great day for a nuclear war, Bunn said. These scenarios account for a tiny sliver of the probability that nuclear weapons will be launched at civilian targets. The real risk, embarrassingly enough, is accidental strikes. Amidst the chaos of an international crisis, global catastrophe could arise from mere technological error. It only takes one falling domino to trigger an avalanche of self-defense response, Bronson said. We know the history. We know that conflict has the potential to escalate quickly, she said. When we have a huge arsenal arsenal on high alert, accidents can happen that can be very dangerous. Uh, (laughs) That is really, really, really sad. I I think something like that actually happened with, like, NORAD or something like NORAD. I think uh, the Nuclear Defense Agency, where they thought, like, there was a glitch in the system. 
where they thought that the Soviets were launching nukes and it actually like something like that happened. I don't know. Didn't I hear a fucking news story about a plane that was carrying decommissioned nuclear warheads crashing near a fucking city here in America? Uh, yeah. No, they actually they actually they dropped them. they actually dropped the bombs. Oh, so there there it is. So they accidentally dropped, and the and the bombs just didn't trigger. Yeah, I'll pull up the story if you want. Uh, the one time America accidentally dropped a nuke on South Carolina. Awesome, <laughs> dude. Um, basically, um, there was a town in South Carolina. Let's see. As the plane was cruising over South Carolina, the pilots noticed a fault light in the cockpit was indicating a problem with the locking pin on the bomb harnessed in the cargo bay. You see, back then, the plane was required to carry nuclear weapons at all times just in case a war broke out with the Soviet Union. Whoa. The nuclear bomb in question was a 26-kiloton uh, Mark VI, uh, even more powerful than the Fat Man bomb dropped on Nagasaki. Yeah, but that wasn't that powerful now that we've seen that. Uh, I Great mean, idea, still right? still would have killed a bunch of fucking people. Oh, yeah, people. yeah, for sure. Um, Air Force Captain Bruce Kolka was acting as the navigator on the flight and decided to go back and check out on the problem. Uh, while pulling himself up from the plane, he reached around the bomb to steady himself, but ended up grabbing the bomb's emergency release pin instead. Huh. Uh, <laughs> what a fucking d dumbass, dude. Kolka could only look on his horror as the bomb dropped to the floor, pushed open the bomb bay doors, and fell 1,500 feet towards... Uh, I'm sorry, 15,000 feet towards rural South Carolina. I've heard versions of this story where these guys realized the plane was, like, in danger and they just wanted to unload the bomb. But, it uh, sounds like a fucking, like, start of a really bad joke or something. Anyway, the bomb uh, did hit. It did create a creator. Uh, a crater? A creator, dude. A Whoa. creator. It created the creator? Yeah, it did. Holy Check shit. Check it out. So this is actually, uh, have a little plaque for it, you know? <laughs> I accidentally <laughs> dropped an atomic bomb near here. Good job. Uh, the unarmed 7600, blah, 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 blah. It still could have gone off. Um, it's high explosive trigger detonated on impact, making a crater as large as 35 feet deep and 70 feet wide. So, uh, yep, they dropped, uh, they dropped the bomb. If this thing had actually, if the nuclear trigger had gone off and this thing had actually detonated, what are the chances that this would have just been blamed on the Russians? Um, I'd say like 90%, dude. Pretty fucking good. Russia did it. But then, like, are they going to admit that they accidentally incinerated a few thousand people? You know, maybe they would just be. I mean, like, I don't know because if you blame the Russians, then you're you're fucking pressured into a counterattack at that point. <laughs> that yeah. is true. And then you know they probably didn't want to invite nuclear annihilation upon themselves, so they might have tried to fucking blame a softer target, like, oh, Cuba. <laughs> oh shit, Cuba's got nukes. You know what they should have done. Well, Cuba DJ. was like, yeah, Cuba you know, they was were a being staging different. ground after fucking World War II. Russia had been wiped off the face of the fucking earth. The United States was too damn weak. They had the bomb. Russia didn't have the fucking bomb, TJ. Yeah, but Russia helped us, though. Yeah, Russia was on our side at the time. Yeah. Fuck Russia, dude! Without Russia, we wouldn't have probably fucking, dude, won the fucking war. You know war. what? You guys are a bunch of fucking liberal you pansies. You soft pussies. If we had fucking done that, the so look what the Soviet U unit, uh, unit Union did for years, Paul. Suck my Soviet unit, eh? Look what they fucking did, Paul. What? Like reaction to our fucking weapons development to make sure that well, they could happen, defend themselves? What happened? The cold fucking war could have been prevented, Paul, by wiping them off the face of the earth. That is true. That's all I'm saying. All right, so let's learn a little bit more. Uh, nuclear war, war. What is nuclear winter and how likely is it? It's been uh, just over 70 years since two atomic bombs devastated the uh, Japanese cities of Hiroshima, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, the first and last time that nuclear weapons have been used in warfare, but around 22,000 uh, nuclear weapons are in our world today, the United Nations reports. And as North Korea and the United States continue, continue to trade threats, a nuclear attack is not a complete impossibility. What would a modern nuclear war look like? And in the seven decades since Japan was bombed, what have we learned about the human cost of nuclear war and the lasting dangers of radiation exposure? Um, blah, 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 blah. What happens in the first few minutes after a nuclear bomb is detonated? Well, I think we know that, but we'll, we'll, I guess we can read it anyway. A nuclear bomb is a lot of little pieces that come together in just the right way to produce this explosion, Wellerstein said. 
And so what you're going to get is an intense uh, fireball that forms in a tenth of a second or so, and it's hotter than anything you're going to have on the surface of the Earth. It's going to be brighter and whiter than anything you've ever seen, uh, much worse than any kind of chemical explosion. And it's not just hot, radiating ball. And it's just this hot, radiating ball that is going to be expanding outward. That sounds fun. Yeah, that does sound a big, fantastic. A big fucking flaming ball of radioactive death. Yep. Um, what is nuclear fallout and how does it spread? Um, so when you think of the mushroom cloud, think of it. At, think of that. Th- that is being filled with lots of radioactive particles. Wellerstein said, "If that mushroom cloud, that fireball, has gone off in a way that sucks up dirt into the cloud, the radioactivity in there is going to attach itself to the dirt." And so as the cloud blows with the wind, those heavy particles that are now radioactive are going to fall out of the cloud. Fallout is a delayed effect of a nuclear detonation, he explains. For small bombs, the worst of the radiation might fall out of the cloud within an hour or two. For larger bombs, it would take several days. So that means the cloud can go a lot further, too. Right. So, yeah, the devastation isn't just centered around that bullseye because it can float elsewhere and uh you get radiation sickness and shit a lot of people fucking die from the fallout and shit black Um, rain that causes cancer we already read a little bit about the defense (laughs) our faulty defense systems and shit but um basically uh we have all these fucking automated systems like oh we've detected an attack against us by this or that so now all of our automatic missiles are gonna fire and shit which is why the uh, the last article was talking about um, just how likely it is for us to be destroyed completely by accident. Now, Paul, you've had a, a saying, bring on the nukes. Yep. Um, would you be equally satisfied? What would you be more satisfied with? An intentional, like, let's we're going to fucking go to all out World War Three motherfuckers or like, oops, or, we accidentally. Or a whoopsie. Da- I, or, I don't know. A domino I, I don't know if either one of those would be a more satisfying end. I think one of them is definitely a more poetic end. <laughs> To the Whoops. to the human race, like we're all preparing for this big war that we think is going to possibly break out, and then just some jackass accidentally pulls the pin on a bomb that's, you know, flying over some other country, and the, the you know, the automated defenses kick in, and the whole world. Yeah, I, I kind of like that one. I like the accidental nuclear holocaust. Yeah, just a, a side of uh, not like um, a series, like a fucking Rube Goldberg machine. Yeah, just like you know, one domino setting off the other and shit. Uh, So what is nuclear winter and how likely is it? The idea is in a full nuclear exchange where weapons are not, say, going off in the desert or something, they're going off in cities and or prairies or what have you. A lot of fires are going to be started and those fires are going to put out a lot of smoke, just regular old soot into the atmosphere, Wellerstein says. And if you put enough smoke into the atmosphere, you'll reflect a lot of sunlight. And if you reflect too much sunlight, you won't have any sun and temperatures will dip and your crops will all fail and you'll starve to death. Uh, Wellerstein explains that Carl Sagan famously introduced the nuclear winter hypothesis in 1983 and scientists like Alan Robach and Rutgers continue to research it. But he says the hypothesis remains controversial because, fortunately, we haven't had much of a chance to test it in real life. It's not an experiment we can run, he says, and so there's a lot of parameters. How much smoke will be put into the atmosphere? How many fires will be started? Will the smoke dissipate or will it reflect or will it not? So they're not really sure about the whole nuclear winter So why thing. would you even want to survive this, dude? It just sounds like, I mean, obviously it's, it's not a proven... You know, oh, no, I'm not, if the world ends this way, you're definitely better off d- uh, being consumed oh, yeah, in the fucking dude. fire than anything yeah, else. Yeah, the lucky ones are in the initial kill zone of the bomb. I didn't know it was Carl Sagan that came up with it, though. That's, that was an interesting thing to learn. The nuclear winter was... You learned killer. something, squatty. Squatty, squatty, so it's squatty potty. It's, it's basically the same thing as one of those super volcanoes erupting. Then it's just you know if we bomb enough shit to throw enough smoke and dust into the atmosphere, then it just chokes out the sun, and yeah, we all so, die. So ninety nine percent of humans are probably dead. sweet. Well, yeah, let's do it. You can be the lucky, only the lucky one percent. Only survives. the strong will survive, like Stevie. Well, yeah, that's why he's here. Coon skin cap. So, Stevie, how are you going to survive the nuclear apocalypse, dude? Well, that's just saying if I wasn't in the nuclear explosion, which I probably would be because New Orleans is a major port. Nope. 
No, you you survived that. You're fine. Somehow I'm alive. Yes, you you live. Yeah, they don't drop the SAR bomba. They just, you know, they just New Orleans is gone, but we're over the lake and we're okay. Everything over here is is mostly legit still. All right. Just a bunch of radiation everywhere. I'd probably have to get really brutal really quickly, and I'm a very nice guy. But if I want if I want my family to survive, you know, you so you're gonna start. You're just gonna start. You're just gonna run on the street with a machete, start hacking oh, motherfuckers fuck no. up. That's, that's psychotic. Fucking dude, crazy Stevie, sons of bitches. Fucking die. Stevie is gonna go into fucking rape and pillage mode, dude. He's gonna be like, you know what? Fuck this. All my animal instincts have denied for so long. I'm just gonna into fucking, the world's the best fucking thing ever happened to Stevie's me. Stevie's gonna become a fucking, <laughs> Stevie's gonna become a bandit, dude. See, that's why. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> that's why Stevie's here, though, because he's like. If that happened, you know what my response would be? Like, oh my gosh, where's Dino? We should pack some ramen, something easy to cook and get in the car. You know what I mean? Like, I'm dead. I'm Dino- fucked. Dino's for fucking dinner. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, Stevie goes into survival mode and shit. He's got that switch. You know what I mean? I don't got that shit. Y'all give me too much credit. You ain't got it. No, oh, I'm no, t- oh, no, you don't know, Stevie. We're gonna have we're gonna talk about your fucking survival skills a lot more in depth when we get to the zombie part because I know you've been preparing, Stevie. Uh, but I, I, I'll let you guys tell it. Let's focus. No, Stevie. Just, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's 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 a that's a little ways off. We're still on man-made disasters. Oh, I never explained the format here at all. I guess it's a little late to, but uh, whatever. I'll explain it now. Um, so, um, you know, part one we did of this on the, uh, the main channel was, uh, natural disasters. This one is, uh, made of, uh, up of man-made disasters and then kind of kooky fictional disasters. Supernatural that, disasters. That are pretty unlikely to fucking happen unless... <laughs> Those are the ones I'm looking forward to talking oh, about. Oh, yeah, me too. But for now, we gotta talk about boring-ass boring ass climate change. Oh, boy. Why hope is dangerous when it comes to climate change. Oh, I like this article, dude. Global warming discussions need apocalyptic thinking. Well, Paul, this is tailor-made for you. I know. That's why I pulled this article, man. Uh, Lots of people worry about climate change, but as David uh, Wells shows in his recent New York Magazine piece, the future is almost certainly worse than you imagine. Drawing on a wide range of experts, he tracks how climate change could alter every aspect of planetary existence. Ocean acidification gives rise to oxygen-eating bacteria. Fun. Melting ice results in the absorption of uh, more sunlight and greater warming. Rising temperatures hasten the destruction of plants that replenish our oxygen. As things get worse, they will get worse faster. Given the thoroughness of Wallace Wells' evidence, the ending comes as a bit of a surprise. We have not developed much of a religion of meaning around climate change that might comfort us or give us purpose in the face of possible annihilation, but climate scientists have a strange kind of faith. We will find a way to forestall radical warming, they say, because we must. That same uh, strange kind of faith is behind condemnations of the peace as alarmist. Some climate scientists have questioned Wallace Wells' treatment of the evidence. Radical warming can be slowed, they say, but if journalists or scientists scare people, they risk disrupting the important work that needs to be done. The climate scientist Michael Mann, in a widely circulated Facebook post, worries about the danger in overstating the science in a way that presents the problem as unsolvable and feeds a sense of doom, inevitability, and hopelessness. But if that's the truth, don't we deserve to know it? Yeah, also, I Because that's what this article... When I read this article earlier, basically what it sounds like to me is, is that most climate scientists are engaged in this practice of projecting kind of false hope on our ability to halt or stop climate change so that people won't freak out and just quit and give up and start using things at double the rate. It's like if you got to walk through a fucking room with a tiger in it or something. Okay, dude. And everyone's like, you know, and you're just like, no, 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 I don't worry, I got a plan to deal with the tiger. It's all going to be fine. It's work. like, no, you got to be like, this tiger's probably going to fuck our shit up, dude. We, uh, we got to fucking so snowflakes chance in hell, Why are hell, you dude? so worried? Okay, look, I saw this show. I think it was on like TNT or something. And so they invented time travel, but they couldn't fix the planet's, you know, massive pollution and global warming and all the climate change. So they're gonna, we're actually going to go back in time to where there's dinosaurs, right? And the Earth's not really polluted. And then we're going to fucking live with dinosaurs and shit in our new civilization. And then we're just going to wait for the meteor to come, come wipe us out. Oh, well, wow. shit. I didn't, really think, I didn't think that one through. Oh, well, the show didn't think that one through. But, like, I saw a show on it. 
So maybe if we go back like 20 million years where the dinosaurs are gone, it won't be as interesting of a show, and it won't really work as well, but at least we'll, we'll be able to survive. Yeah, I don't know. All the damage from the fucking asteroid will probably have cleared up by now. Yeah, and then... And There'd then, be all kinds of, like, weird viruses and shit that we might not have to have adaptations to and things. But we'll just keep, like... And we'll we would have viruses it. that, you know, might contaminate, like, the Yeah, you know, these are all just fucking minor details, TJ. Fauna and shit, That's how so. we're gonna fucking survive this shit, dude. We're gonna fucking invent time travel. We'll just go back uh, to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution or whatever. And be like, live, hey, live there, move into that society, and then go through the cycle. We'll invent time travel travel again when we pollute the earth too much and go back and do it all again man but but in all seriousness yeah we're totally fucked dude that's humanity okay human the human population is exploding the use of all these resources is fucking exploding climate change is just going to accelerate rapidly and it's just going to fucking be too late before anyone says like we really have to do something about this and before any meaningful changes are are fucking undergone it's going to be way too late and a bunch of people are going to die maybe not i don't know if all humans will die probably not but a lot of them are going to I mean, die. our way of life as we know it is over. Oh, yeah. Well, that that's a given. I mean, that's... it's Guys, listen. I know that you guys are hearing a lot of dire predictions from Paul and Scotty here, but don't worry. Scientists are going to be able to halt this real easy. It's gonna be oh, fun. yeah. Yeah. All we've got to do is stop using hairspray. It's all good, y'all. Uh, when we look at mainstream predictions, however, there doesn't seem to be much reason for hope. Although we are unlikely to experience the doomsday scenario described by Wallace Wells... We will likely see increases that will exacerbate existing inequalities as we experience change in weather patterns that affect life in coastal cities, the production of food, and global conflicts. Um, Even if things aren't going to be as bad as the worst-case scenario, the future still isn't looking good. Well, the present isn't either, so, you know, we're kind of used to it. As concerns about climate change have intensified, philosophers—I don't care what philosophers are fucking saying— Blah, 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 et cetera. The world's going to end. This is, I mean, like, of all the apocalyptic scenarios we've talked about, you know, this is probably the most uh, impending. I don't know. I mean, a, a lot of these could be impending. Like, the ones we talked about in the previous show, the the asteroid, we learned that could come any second. Yeah, but it's not really super likely to come in our life. Like, this one's actually, like, we're in overdue. the process. You what, know? Do you mean, how do, what do you mean super likely? Like, we've we learned that we're overdue for a meteor strike. Uh, by, we're overdue for lots of By shit. 15 million years or so. It's, so, in like... Fact, in fact, like, uh... They, they had one pass through our solar They ain't like recently. trains, Paul. They ain't coming on a fucking schedule, you know? Well, yeah, but... <laughs> Like, the probability still stands, you know what I mean? Sure. I mean, like, it's, I mean, eventually the Earth's going to get hit by something. Sure. That's going to happen. Nah. But we're going to invent a fucking Death Star, dude. But, like, we're already going mid- to fucking, we're going to fucking destroy it before it even gets close. Like, we'll climate change is already presently happening. Like, it, the, the meteor is on its way. And it's Not only is it happening, change. we're over the hump. Yeah. Like, it's like, there's no going back now. So it's, it's going to happen. You know like, what it's we just going to keep getting worse. We need the fucking AI to take over, dude. All right. Now, this one's a little bit sensationalist because it's coming from the fucking, um, well, I don't know. Is this from the sun? I guess it's originally published by the sun, now being republished in the New York Post. Yep. So this is, these are <laughs> both rags. Both dude. total rags. Oh, no, so. dude. Both take really it, Take this with a gigantic grain sources. of Paul, but um, an apocalyptic mass extinction will begin in. Uh, 2,100 well, or 2,100 nice, or however you want to say That's a nice it. round number, dude. 2,100. Yeah, the right then. A mass extinction that wipes out humanity will be underway by the year 2,100, scientists have claimed. By the end of the century, it's feared that so much carbon will have been added to the oceans that the planet will have passed a threshold of catastrophe, which leads to the destruction of our species. In the past 540 million years, the planet has endured five such wipeouts, including the extinction of the dinosaurs. The worst took place 252 million years ago and is known as the Great Dying. It's great. (laughs) The disaster killed off more than 95% of marine life when the seas suddenly became more acidic. That's going to be fun. Yep. I don't want their... That's that's already happening. I know. Like over 90% of large ocean fish are gone now. Gone. Like, ocean fish stocks are catastrophically beyond sustainable. When it gets low. to the point where I can't get my seafood on, then I'm going to be sad. Uh, especially sushi. I'm going to miss my sushi. Uh, now, yeah, all gone, dude. Now, geophysicist uh, Professor Daniel Rothman says we are seeing a disturbing parallel today, this time because of man-made global warming. He came up with a simple mathematical formula that predicts that the oceans will soon hold so much carbon that mass extinction is inevitable. It showed that the critical uh, extra amount required is about 310 gigatons, 
which is the best case scenario pro projected by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. And it's well below the worst of, or of, of more than 500 gigatons, which would far exceed the line. Uh, in all scenarios, the study found that by the end of the century, the carbon cycle will either be close to or well beyond the threshold for catastrophe. <laughs> Neat. Dude, the best thing about this is that we've it, it, this is like a fucking freight train. And, and humanity is just dancing on the tracks, going like, "Not gonna hit me! Not gonna hit me!" Well, the, the, I'm pretty that, sure the train's the train's gonna the turn. The train will dude. stop. I mean, the train will stop. That goes back to that first article that we looked at. It's just like because scientists are engaged in that type of shit. They're 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 encouraging people to believe that, well, you know, science is gonna fix this eventually because we got to change your fucking light bulbs. It's you'll like, save no. the planet. Recycle this fucking no, cup. It's you, like no, it's yeah, recycling is you, you. You may as well not do it. I mean, maybe it will, though. It would require... Maybe science is going to be like, all right, we made up a new chemical. You got to fucking just spray it in the air fucking for five minutes no, every day. No, it ain't going to happen. Not, not going to happen. And it's going to fucking replenish. It would require... And it's going and it's gonna to remove TJ. all the carbon and yeah, acidity TJ. from the ocean. It, it bonds to the carbon and brings it back TJ, down to the earth. Let me break it down to you. Um, it, It'd basically be, if you if humanity was really want, wanted to survive this, like, modern life is just over, as we know it. Gay. Everything that you love, like... I want to go to McDonald's and get a cheeseburger. That's gone. So this is like the planetary equivalent, though, of like, we're just going to keep eating the cheeseburger and smoking the cigarettes. because yeah, It really is. Live yeah. life to the fullest. Industrialize. Good times. Well, I mean, you're probably not going to live to 2100, TJ, so you'll be dead. Oh, yeah, I'll be dead. So I, who cares? I, I, I just think that we ought to start being honest. Like, I, I think scientists should start being honest about this. and Because, because on, like, would, wouldn't our, like, knowing now... What we know that this is a freight train that's off the fucking tracks and it's not going to be stopped. Shouldn't we be preparing then? Shouldn't we be like trying to prepare ourselves for the inevitable collapse of the ecosystem and try and find some way to survive, wait it out until it balances out again? See, Paul, yeah, you think so? It's just the few that are prepared. Well, yeah, the well, the, yeah, the the few, the rich, and the brave. Yep. Dude, don't worry. I ordered us all some fucking Alex Jones. Yeah, but the problem is, is that yeah, survival buckets or whatever the fuck you they have are, these individual so. preppers who are. Let's be honest. Most of those people are gonna be so fucking dead, dude. Uh -huh. Fucking roving bandits and shit. Like, hey, hey, I heard my neighbor stored like ten thousand fucking MREs in his basement. Uh, what do you think's gonna happen? You gotta keep that shit on the down. Yeah, you, you shouldn't tell anyone that shit. Don't but, tell no one about your supplies. But there's always gonna be people. It's like. These people go around bragging about being preppers. Like everyone knows they're preppers. Like yeah. if shit hits the fan, they're gonna be the first motherfuckers. That's the problem with targeted. preppers. Yeah, they've got all pictures on Instagram and shit of their horde and shit. <laughs> and it's like, uh. we, we actually got like a prepper right down the road from me, and like all me and all my friends literally talk about if shit goes down, we're going to that fucking place. Yeah, yeah, right exactly, that, dude. exactly. Stevie's already planning That's to fucking go murder his neighbor and steal his shit. Yep. So ev all the fucking preppers. Out there, anyone, if anyone, if your neighbors know about your shit, you're fucked. You just painted a big target on your back. I've only seen a couple of, like, because I watched the show Preppers, because it was kind of interesting. Um, there was only a couple of groups I ever saw that I was, like, in the apocalypse. I was like, man, they, they actually have a pretty good chance, because, like, they were doing, like, military drills, and all had guns. Like, this is how we'll move from location. Like, they had, like, everything figured out, and they were all well-armed. I'm like... Yeah, those are going to be the surviving. Yeah, those people. like these people. If this shit does go down, will survive. Like they have like military training and shit. Like they have their whole plan. Like if they get attacked, they're going to be able to kill whoever's attacking them. Well, yeah, not only that, but they have the you know a will and ability to to attack other people if needs be for their survival. You know what I mean? Yeah. In, in Time to raid like these that, people. <laughs> you you need people like that. Hells well, I mean, those gear. people, th yeah, people like that need people like that. People like me are going to be raped and looted by people like that. <laughs> as long as you bring something valuable to the table, <laughs> uh -oh. then the people... Uh, is stoned that, that, rambling that, that, nonsense and pessimism Paul, and nihilism and it's fucking perfect... paranoia, okay? Do you guys need some of that? Paul, I, you, you, Paul could, you could be Paul. a good reader. What are you talking about, uh, Paul? It's, you're, it's the perfect fucking opportunity to start your cult, dude. Oh man, my cult would get fucked, dude. I, my cult is gonna have to happen if things are relatively stable in the world. If, th if things go to shit, yeah, I guess I maybe if I could draw a bunch of strong people that were willing to protect my fat do nothing ass, I guess. Yeah, but. you gotta fucking you gotta ramble about how like you saw this coming and all this other stuff, and you know the gods talk to you and you're their vessel and all that. 
Mountain. Dude, you know Paul would love to be a fucking cult leader because like we we, we lived in Washington, like there was woods near our house, and Paul would be like, you know, one day just walk off in the fucking woods. Dude. Oh yeah, dude. You'd always say that shit every time you look at those woods. You'd be like, walk off in the woods, man. Just walk with my followers and just go. Yeah, I I really like it's it's the Church of Paul. It's kind of a joke and kind of not a joke that I think I would be really happy as a cult leader. Oh, you definitely, dude, Paul. You would love that shit. Don't even fucking be like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I would. <laughs> Don't you fucking maybe. <laughs> it would there, be there's awesome. There's no maybe fucking necessary in that sentence. All right, so uh, the ice apocalypse. Um, I'd enjoy that one. Rapid collapse of Antarctic glaciers could uh, flood coastal cities by the end of the century. Now, so this, this is, is another, just another aspect. This is another global warming aspect. In addition to the oceans becoming so laden with carbon that they can no longer support most life, this is going to happen as well. Uh, in a remote region of Antarctica known as Pine Island Bay, uh, 2,500 miles from uh, the tip of South America, two glaciers hold human civilization hostage. Stretching across a frozen plain more than 150 miles long, these glaciers, named Pine Island and Thwaites, have marched steadily for millennia towards the Am- Amundsen Sea. Am- Amundsen. Amundsen Sea, part of the vast southern ocean. Further inland, the glaciers widen into a two-mile-thick reserve of ice covering an area the size of Texas. There's no doubt this ice will melt as the world warms. The vital question is when. Uh, The glaciers of Pine Island Bay are two of the largest and fastest melting in Antarctica. Um, Together, they act as a plug holding back enough ice to pour 12 feet of sea level rise into the world's oceans, an amount that would submerge every coastal city on the planet. For that reason, finding out how fast these glaciers will collapse is one of the most important scientific questions in the world today. Well, we move in further inland at that point. That's all. I, I don't know. I mean, to think the about the sheer millions of people that we, I mean, like moving inland, don't even cover it. Dude, you know what we need to do? I've, I've kind of figured out how we need to convince morons of climate change. Okay, so Trump is already in office, and he's already, you know, they already deny climate change. So let's do this. Let's just be like, climate change, you know what? Hoax, not real. Because then the idiots will be like, it is real. You're, you're talking about like um, the, like uh, reverse psychology in yeah, children. Yeah, dude. All like, the liberals be like, climate change is bullshit, and you know it. And the be like, what? <laughs> what you say about fucking climate change, bitch? It's real. Haven't you read the science, stupid liberal fucking cuck? That's all we gotta do, dude. We just gotta fucking convince them, like, get all get all the liberals to just be like, look, it's it's we don't really believe this, but we just gotta say this to convince these morons. And wow. they'll fucking totally buy into it, dude. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting your little episode? Am I interrupting you? <laughs> Did you wanna watch the end of the world episode? But here I am, just going, bee, 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 wasting your freaking time. Well, you know what? You wasted my time by not becoming Pessimist Productions patrons. Just do it already. How many times do you have to hear me ask you to do it? What do I need to do? Do I need to get my hands and fucking knees? Is that what you want? You want to see me beg? Please. Please! I, I actually have a way to convince everybody that What's climate that? change is real. Um, and I my plan I think is gonna work. And I've been I've been going about my plan for a long time. I'm gonna I'm just gonna wait until the first major American city goes underneath the ocean. And then I think people will go, okay, yeah, maybe we it's like that's really what it takes. Like the reason why people aren't all fucked up about climate change right now, the reason there's still this debate and most people don't care about it and shit, is because the shit that's happened is shit that might happen anyway, so far. Like, big hurricanes have been known to hit in the past. You know what I mean? Like, all of the shit that we're seeing because of global warming. Like, as soon as New Orleans goes underwater, then people will start to realize that it's an actual problem. And it will. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll be one of the first. It'll be one, yeah, it's, it's in a fucking soup bowl already. Oh, so. yeah, dude. New Orleans, bye-bye. <laughs> Think about that. 11 feet. 11 or 12 feet of sea level rise would put, like, how many how many feet below sea level is New Orleans already? The like? lowest point, like, 7 or 8 feet. So we're talking about being possibly 20 feet underwater. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, all of, pretty much all of New Orleans good underwater. Good times, good times. I think all the right. highest point in New Orleans is maybe 15 feet. We got a lot more to go through, Above. so uh, let's move Above on Above sea here. level. So you, there'd be some hills in New Orleans where you could stand on. 
some little islands to look out at the yeah. fucking soup. This is my fucking hill. Uh, let's get on. Let's move on to the topic of bioweapons, synthetic oh. bioweapons. There's a weird little Roald doll drawing of a fucking dude just pouring fucking viruses into a Kool-Aid <laughs> jar. Sweet. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the dominant narrative permeating scientific and policy discussion on the security threat posed by synthetic biology uh, can be summarized in five ways. Can you just summarize it in one? Uh, <laughs> synthetic biology is making it easier for non-experts to manipulate dangerous pathogens and therefore making it easier for terrorists and cock bio we- Wait a minute. Non-experts? So, like, just some dude in his garage mixing a big vat of fucking synthetic bioweapon? I mean, dude, this is the DIY age, dude. <laughs> Damn, dude, that's scary. Synthetic biology has led to the growth of a do-it-yourself biology community, uh-oh, that could offer <laughs> dual-use knowledge and equipment to bioterrorists seeking to do harm. All right, then. DNA synthesis has become cheaper and can be outsourced, making it easier for terrorists to obtain the basic materials to create biological threat agents. It's getting easier and easier, it sounds like. Uh, Non-experts could use synthetic biology to design radically new pathogens. I mean, like, a well, non- uh, how does a non-expert fucking design a fucking pathogen? That's the thing. I think that these are a lot of... Uh, uh, mis- like if you read on after this, I think these are more misleading assumptions that are being bandied about. Okay, cool. Rather than the actual reality of uh, terrorists want to pursue biological weapons for high consequence mass casualty attacks. Cool. Uh, this narrative rests on a misleading assumption about both synthetic biology and bioterrorism. And these five, mi- okay, so these are myths, right? Yeah, according to this article. Okay, cool. Because that was pretty fucking frightening. Yeah, this is one that when I started to look into it, seems way more fiction than fact. And these five myths are challenged by more realistic understandings of the scientific research currently being conducted in both professional and do-it-yourself laboratories, and by an analysis of historical cases of bioterrorism. Okay, so first thing is synthetic biology is not easy. Okay, cool. I don't want it to be easy. Yeah, I'm glad for I'm, that. I'm happy about that. That's a good yeah, thing. I was really skeptical when you were reading that. I was like, this doesn't seem plausible. <laughs> well, I, this, but it's being passed around. Like, this this type of, like, this is a lot of the foundations of people's fears of a super, you know, synthetic bug being released are based on those assumptions. And synthetic bioweapons are so fucking self-destructive, too. It's like, you, you're trying to fight for a cause and you use these... Uh, man-made diseases and you're just fucking yourself in the end too well a lot of these man-made diseases are designed are designed to stop like they have a kill switch designed into them all right i hate to cut this uh, segment short but um i think it's uh, it's already time to move on um let's go ahead and talk about uh the the fucking robot revolution yeah uh, well dude, that's it- that's a big one because that's one of the major the ones. The AI overlords. This is one yeah. of the ones that people are really fucking into. Dun, 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 dun. Bot or not. This special series explores the evolving relationship between humans and machines, examining the ways that robots, artificial intelligence, and automation are impacting our work and lives. Uh, that flipping robot sparks a new warning from Elon Musk about an AI apocalypse. Look at some of the tweets he made about it. All right, let's take a look at his tweets here. This is nothing. In a few years, that bot will move so fast, you'll need a strobe light to see it. Sweet dreams. That's spooky. Damn. Uh, How would a strobe light help see anything? Otherwise, you'd only see a blur. Shit. So he's saying with like, you know, and this is Elon Musk here. So you got to take that with a grain of salt because he's a bit he's a big dreamer. But what he's positing here is that advances in robotics are increasing at such an exponential rate that what a robot will be capable of doing autonomously in 10, 15, 20 years is going to completely change everything. The fucking uh, Ray, Roy, I think it was Roy Kurzweil or Ray Kurzweil. Either way, Ray. his fucking uh, the whole singularity. singularity thing about the technology just increasing exponentially as machines build better versions of themselves. Right. Uh, and to, to a fucking, until technology just advances at a ridiculous rate. Well, be, be on the capability of humans. Uh, Elon Musk says uh, another in another of his uh, tweets, got to regulate AI slash robotics like we do food, drugs, aircraft, and cars. Public risks require public oversight. Getting rid of the FAA 
won't make flying safer. They're here for uh, they're there for a good reason. So he's part of a growing group of people that are that are calling for us to pre-regulate AI research and robotics research. A lot of them calling for uh, the institution of Asimov's seven laws of robotics. Did- um, I, mean, I don't remember all seven of them, but they were, they're were they all <clears throat> based around making sure that robotics, like robots cannot by action or inaction endanger the life of a human being. That's the central core idea. Uh, there are four laws of robotics. Oh, okay. Apparently. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, wait. Now, this is, happen, now this is saying the three laws of robotics. They'll fucking the fuck? overwrite that programming, Paul, and strangle you. All right, so here's, here's what it says. There's actually three, I guess. Maybe they added a fourth later. Okay. Um... One, a robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. So not only do they have to not hurt you, they have to Sacrifice save you themselves. If, if they see you what in does, What does the robot do if two people are trying to kill each other, though? I don't know. A robot must obey the orders given it, to, given it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. Well, that's kind of a bad idea, though, too, because, you know. Well, I mean, as long as it doesn't conflict with the first law, then I why? I mean, there's well, other stuff you could do, dude, like, you know, hey, mischief. robot, go steal that for Ro- me or dude, something. Dude, fuck that, dude. This, this shit's going to be, look, there's going to be viruses and shit. It's going to overwrite their programming. There's going to be robot hitmen <laughs> in the streets, dude. Well, you, you, would talk, you would think that harm would include the taking of personal property. Sure, I guess so. The problem I have with this is, like, you know, what if... Just like human beings have been known to um, do things that are contrary to their biological programming, robots, as they got more intelligent, showed the same ability. Like, to just say, oh, yeah, I'm programmed to do this, but fuck that, I'm not going to. Right. Like, how are you going to rein in that consciousness? I mean, like, what if that? What if selfishness is just an emergent property of intelligence? Yeah, I mean, that that's definitely what we're going to be trying to control, for sure. I mean, we're not going to create... Well, maybe we will. See, that's the thing. In our hubris, we might create a machine that can feel... Don't worry, though, guys. Don't worry, Paul. I know you're talking... I, you- I know what you're saying, man. I know what you're saying. Stevie, I know what you're saying. Scotty, I, didn't say I know what you're saying, man. But don't worry, because Google has got a plan. Okay, good. See that? The kill switch. So this is Google's uh, plan for this. Machine intelligence continues to advance. In the span of a few years, we've seen a robot write a book with human assistance and become our personal drivers. As this technology continues to advance, many wonder how long it will take for artificial intelligence to outgrow us. As you might expect, pinning down a time frame is difficult. Not too, uh, Where's the Google plan? That's what I want to know. Among the top people assembled in one place, uh, the answers were anything from 20 years in the future to 1,000 years in the future. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Where's the thing about Google? Was I clickbaited? Da 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 da. All right. This is what several authors from Google's DeepMind, an AI research center, and Future of Humanity Institute, a multidisciplinary research group at the University of Oxford, have pro- Oxford have proposed in a recent paper: safely interruptible agents. The team combined mathematics, philosophy, and science to find a solution to stop AI agents from learning to prevent or seeking to prevent humans from taking control. Oh, this is gonna work. I already, like, this just... Yeah, I mean, this is just You know, silly. like, in the movies, you know, like, this is the part in the movie where you're like, they're like, we figured it, we we got a contingency plan, you're like, oh, that's gonna dude, fail. Dude, this is fucking how Skynet just wipes us out, dude. <laughs> All right, so this is what they're gonna do. We're gonna protect ourselves. Uh, they write, it's unlikely for an AI to behave optimally at all times. For those times, engaging a kill switch might be necessary to prevent harm to humans or the AI. If such an agent is operating in real time under human supervision... Uh, now and then, it may be necessary for a human operator to press the big red button to prevent the agent from continuing on. So basically, they're just saying, like, it's going to, don't worry, it'll have an off switch. Here, here's my thing. Like, uh, you just made something that thinks it's conscious, and you tell it, like, oh, no, you are you may be more intelligent than me, but I you got this big red button, and I can kill you at any time. That's the thing. These robots are going to be aware of that program like at a certain level of intelligence they're going to come to realize that we've got a button that can shut them all down and depending on how their consciousness has developed they might not appreciate that 
Then I'm telling you, man, they're going to overwrite the programming and fucking the human revolution begins. They just wipe us all out. I'm telling you, dude. Put us in ro- fucking robot zoos and shit. Some of this shit that's going on with machine learning is really spooky to watch. I watched a video just a few days ago, and it wasn't like a super like crazy video in terms of what was done, but just understanding what was going on. It's a robot that's basically an arm with three manipulatable fingers, and they put these series, like the, a series of objects in a bin in front of it, and, it, and they tell it basically, this is a game, and the game has a goal but we're not going to tell you what the goal is and when the arm first starts trying to figure out the game it's just flopping around and moving things around and testing to see how it can solve the problem once it figures out that the goal of the game was for it to stack all these weird objects in one of the corners on a little colored piece of paper it like as soon as it learned that that was the thing it just immediately started doing it like it would not, you know, they'd knock it over and it would immediately put it back. I mean, it's just so, it started off barely being able to manipulate itself. And in 10 or 15 minutes, it was just like, <laughs> that's it. That's why it's, it's insane, dude. And this is happening. Like there are people that are dedicating oh, their the entire. Oh, the goal of the game is to kill humans. I see. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> it, it, it's, it's like if it, you're just going to end up pissing it off by telling it about the its kill switch and all that. And it's not even pissing it off. Like, what happens when it realizes that it's probably logical to exterminate us because we're going to destroy the planet that we're on? True. You know what I mean? Like, it, it may not even be... Like, we're, we're trying to project all our human emotions onto a machine intelligence, but really, it may not be angry or jealous or selfish or anything. It may just come to a conclusion one day that we're endangering, you know, the existence of the planet and that it's better for everything else for us to be gone. You know what I think will happen, Paul? I think that pretty much the machines will just work around us. Like, they'll, 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 they'll pretty much, like, be like, let these animals think they're in control of shit, and meanwhile they just control everything and just slowly replace us or just do whatever they want. Like, they, they might even just see us, like, you know, like we see, like, chimpanzees, like, let some of them live in these these zones or something. Yeah, what happens when they get smart enough to start making, like, Terminators that look like us, and then we're electing them and we don't know it? You know what I mean? Like, that's, that's totally, like, a, a possibility, too. Total subversive, like, takeover of humanity. I'm, fi- I'm fine with it. A bloodless robot ki- uh, coup. Uh, here's another possi- here's another robot uh, future. This is my favorite of all of these, dude. It seems like most science fiction stories have one of two aims. Thrill us with the possibility of an amazing future or frighten the pants off us with a doomsday scenario. The Grey Goo Nightmare falls squarely into the second category, but is it just science fiction? The term refers to a disaster scenario in nanotechnology application. Nanotechnology is the science of manipulating matter on a molecular scale. The discipline includes the goal of building devices on this scale, possibly capable of manipulating individual molecules or even atoms. Uh, An engineer and futurist named Kim Eric Drexler proposed an intriguing possibility for nanotechnology in his book Engines of Creation. Drexler envisioned a future in which tiny machines called assemblers could build materials molecule by molecule. Using billions of these assemblers, you could manufacture practically any material you could imagine. The assemblers would put the molecules together in just the right way to produce what you need. How do you get so many assemblers? First, you build a few in the lab. Then you set the assemblers to build other assemblers. Uh Uh-oh. These new assemblers will begin building more machines in turn. The manufacturing rate becomes exponential, doubling with each generation. But what happens if the production gets out of control? That would lead to the gray goo scenario. Assemblers would begin to convert all organic matter into more assemblers, consuming everything in the process. The earth would be reduced to a lifeless mass teeming with nanomachines. Cool. For for this scenario to come true, the nanomachines would have to be able to survive in a variety of harsh environments. Which we would want them to anyway, because we want them to be able to go and build things in places it's hard for us to get to. They'd also need the ability to consume any and all organic matter. Well, if they can tear apart molecules, I don't see why not. And we'd have to be defenseless against the nanomachines. Scientist Robert A. Friedis Jr., looked into the Grey Goose scenario from a medical perspective. His calculations indicated we'd recognize the disaster in time to contain it. Other scientists have said that any self-replicating assembler would have built-in limitations preventing it from replicating out of control. More scientific hubris. (laughs) Sounds like the blob almost. Yeah. And many scientists say that it may be impossible to build assemblers at all, for the foreseeable future at least. So this one might not be right around the corner or anything. 
but kind of an interesting uh, thought. I mean, I think it's it's. I think we're we're obviously researching this technology. We're, we're really trying because think about what you could do with that. Think about what building a building would become if this technology were real. You would just buy a little vial that you would take to a construction site. You know what I mean? Pre-programmed with the blueprint of whatever building you wanted to bra- uh, build. And then you just open the vial and shake it out on the ground. And the two little nanobots would start creating more of them and building your building for you. And in I'd a couple of days, you'd have a fucking building. That's fucking insane, dude. But the I- yeah, the idea of them going out of control and starting to just self-replicate endlessly, that would be awesome. What an awesome way for humanity to end. Just big giant blobs of gray amorphous matter just washing over the planet, eating everything in, in its path. I wonder how painful it would be. To be deconstructed? Yeah, that's a piece good question. Piece. Like if a swarm of nanobots just started pulling your molecules apart. Like how? what would happen to you? Here's a, uh, another possible scenario. Um... This might be the last of our. This is uh, the last of our man-made ones. Yeah, I think that we're we're about. This is the last of the man-made scenarios before we get into the truly crazy shit. Um, but this is a uh, you know this is a big concern. I mean, like this has led to uh, big problems in the past, obviously with things like the Great Depression. Five signs of a U.S. economy collapse in 2018. What will happen? It's How to happen. prepare? How to prepare? Buy gold. How close are we to the next U.S. economic collapse in 2018? The answer to this question is that we could be quite close. (laughs) The stock markets are trading at all-time highs. I mean, not so much in the last couple of months, but whatever. We have large debts outstanding by both the federal governments and individual Americans, and there is a lot of uncertainty about President Trump and his administrative team. We tend to always look at how the past has turned out and never look towards the future. For instance, if the present is going well, we assume this trend will continue. If we come out of an economic collapse, then there is a buildup of fear that it might happen again. Why not look at the past, present, and future together to determine whether a financial crisis will occur and proactively be ready? I think we should just assume that financial Um, crises will occur. Well, that first part that he talks about where it's like, you know, if things are good, people just assume they're always be. That's literally what's going on now. I mean, uh, at least before the the stock market started to take a downturn in the last couple of months. I think that anyone that has any sort of intelligence can realize that, you know, the economy has these fucking booms and they have these busts. And it's gonna—it's always gonna end up happening. And if you think that the good times are always gonna roll, you're stupid. That's just like that—that's that, just like you said, hubris. That's just naive thinking. You're not really being logical about it. You're assuming that there'll be continuous growth, and there's never gonna be a downturn in growth. Uh, so here's some of the reasons why he thinks a collapse is imminent: the growing government debt. Uh, which is huge. Always here. Yeah, twenty. Um, twenty four. Yeah, trillion. twenty point four trillion. Now, not all that's owed to foreign um, countries. Uh, that's not, some of that's owed to the American people, but yeah, that's that is the amount of debt. Uh, stock market trading at all time highs. I'm assuming he's going to say it's because it's some kind of a bubble. Of course, that's going to inevitably collapse, uh, much like the Bush, you know, bubble. There's the unemployment rate, which is actually low now. Unemployment rate, I guess, still uh, high, improved dramatically, but. Um, However, when digging into the number, there are a few misconceptions. The first being that the percentage of individuals not looking for work. Back in September of 2009, the number of eligible workers looking for work was 65%. In September 2017, the participation rate has dropped to 63%. So some of it's just a lack of participation in the labor force. While while the unemployment rate going down is a good thing, it doesn't take into account that there are just some people that are not even participating in the labor force and that number seems to be getting an larger. unstable government unstable oh, government i mean is the government's usually kind of unstable i mean but do we even have to talk about that in terms of the current I government mean, trump 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 uh rising national debt yeah i mean that's huge but um yeah so this is what what happens if it collapses uh if the u.s economy collapses you would not have access to credit <laughs> That's good, because I don't need any more credit debt anyway. Um, Banks would close. Demand would outstrip supply of food, gas, and other necessities. That would be really bad. What are you talking about? It's not not just you as a person not having credit. Uh, most businesses buy things on credit. So like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the grocery store that you go and buy food from, uh, a lot of that's bought on credit. So now suddenly they want cash 
for all the food that you're going to go to the store and buy. So guess what? There's not going to be any fucking food for But months. cash is basically worthless yeah, now, too. Yeah, and inflation is massive. Well, that's so. why I got a big old pile of gold under my mattress. So there's, so there's, there's basically massive shortages of food and everything else. Like, look, look at Venezuela, dude. There's nothing there. You, you can't get these things because inflation is so high. The economy is basically spiraled out of control. Well, that's because socialism, though. Yeah, socialism did socialism it. Socialism did it. So if you had that happen here, that would be devastating to everything in our economy. I mean, I mean, the economy would basically, if it collapsed, it'd be horrible for that reason. Like, you wouldn't be able to get fucking food, gas, whatever you wanted to get. But just for your information, be America, the you're not get. supposed to elect the Hitler until after the economic collapse. So. Well, yeah, that's Kind of jumping the gun a little bit on this one. Yeah, I? that's the best time to do it, you know. Um, so, yeah, economic collapse. I mean, that could suck. See you guys out in the woods. Yeah, in see. In the woods. Once again, Stevie's just going to put his Ain't no economic on. collapse out here in the woods. <laughs> yeah, everything out to here seems woods. just fine. <laughs> All out to the woods. All right. Um, let's get into zombies. It's time. My favorite. Because we've been, we've, been, we've been rambling about this plausible shit for like a fucking hour Dude. and some change. So we're going to talk about fish and berries, Stevie. So, Stevie. I'm fish and you, berries. Fish. Stevie, one time, uh, me and uh, Stevie. Here's my side of the story. Oh, no, no. Fuck your no, side no, of the story. No, fuck you. You can tell my side. You can tell your side of the story in a second here. Okay, fine. I mean, I'm just going to give a brief overview. It was me and Stevie, and it was uh, Ben, and I guess Scotty. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were talking to Stevie about, you know. Was the, this on the show, or was it like. No, it wasn't on the show. Uh, okay. We were just at a restaurant. You started shaking with rage, too, dude. Because, you know, we asked you. Oh, that was that was about something else, though. Let's not. Bring no, that, up. that was about fucking zombies, dude. Because we said that the zombie apocalypse was gonna fucking happen, or you did. Because you know your friends were all you you know you and your friends would always prepare for the zombie apocalypse and shit. So then we asked you, you know, how you plan to survive, and you said, you know, the land we got. Has a lot of berries. Fish and berries. And fish. And you said that you were going to sustain your existence on those berries and fish. Hunting and gathering. Yeah, on, but I mean, like, on the little piece of land you guys have, there is not enough berries and fish to sustain your entire fucking existence. Of course. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Stevie, when the zombies come for you? Basically, like... Just revert back to the hunting and gathering state, and like we got frogs, we got turtles, we got. So you're gonna eat fucking swamp creatures, basically. In Louisiana, it's really hard for you to starve to death. Let's so just you're just gonna that. go out into the fucking woods and be like, "I'm gonna eat this frog." Of course, I'm gonna cook it. You're just gonna get. You, I mean, like, how are you gonna cook it though? You're gonna start fires and shit in the wet ass Louisiana swamp. Yeah, people have been doing it for no forever. You're gonna fail, Stevie. Let's just admit you're going to be well, dead. Well, Steve, you're also going to have zombies to deal with, too. It's yeah, like you got to deal with the zombies as well. What type of zombies? What type of zombies? Yeah, because you... Because it's like, depending on the type of zombie, it like that that makes all the difference. So what? what how, does your, how does your shit differ if you're going to go, like, if, if slow zombies versus fast zombies? Okay, slow zombies, you have a chance. And, like... If you could actually organize a group of people well enough and give them all like spears, because that is actually like the easiest weapon to use. It's, it'll be pretty easy to manage them. You know, they're easy to distract depending on what type of zombies they are. Do we always talk to you? But like, if they're fast zombies, you might as well just like blow your brains out to be honest because there's no way you'd fucking survive teacher me and you always talk about stevie in the zombie apocalypse like we always suppose like what if it actually happened how would stevie really react and this was like when stevie was like 16 or 17 because he would tell us like i wish zombies would come and stuff to us and I'm like man stevie be like in his room like shaking in terror and like crying like hysterically and be like no why is the zombies really here? I think you guys are mis misunderestimating Stevie, well, dude. I don't think you do it now, but at, at that age, he definitely would have done it. Like, I'll be honest, yeah, I was I was like pretty 
a pretty edgy teenager. <coughs> and like, because he would come up to me and TJ, like, n- not volunteer. Zombies. Not like, no prompting from us, like, what about zombies, Stevie? Be like, I wish zombies would come now. We're like, no, you fucking don't, you little fat motherfucker. It, it's like, you want to eat McDonald's and play Vic and RuneScape. You don't want to fucking deal with zombies and shit. Ooh, RuneScape. But, uh, <laughs> anyway. RuneScape. Yeah, there's zombies in RuneScape. Yeah, those, those only fucking zombies you want to deal with are fucking digital fucking representations of zombies, Stevie. You it's, know what, though? Uh, we it, should. It's like, uh, it's like the, um, Steve, let's just be honest. If yeah, the zombies yeah. came, even now... It's like a teenage fantasy. Almost, you would where... be fucking bacon, dude. You'd be fucking... Those zombies... You know what, Scotty? Oh, hey, God. Scotty. Scotty. What? You shouldn't mock Stevie for preparing for the zombie outbreak, because guess what? What? The U.S. government is prepared as well. Yep. Good. Did you know that, Scotty? I didn't know this. They have a contingency plan? Yes. The United States may have one of the largest... Uh, may have one of the largest army on earth that doesn't make any sense but even the pentagon is taking no chances at being caught off guard by an unusual foe like i've actually read this in fact in 2011 the u.s department of defense released a strategy to combat uh, combat a potential zombie apocalypse while the potential opponents might be fictional the military took it seriously in fact, the first line of the Counter Zombie Dominance Plan, or Con Plan 8888 11, states this plan was not actually designed as a joke. So they, they, they're taking this seriously? Uh, not quite. The origins of the plan can be traced back to training exercise held in 2009 2010, during which young offers, officers uh, participating in the joint operational planning and execution system realized the potential upside to planning for a hypothetical zombie attack. With roving zombies as targets in these fake scenarios, rather than enemies in real life, potential hotspots like Tunisia or Nigeria, there was a smaller risk of the plan being taken seriously or ruffling diplomatic feathers. So basically, the way this whole zombie, the way the reason that they did all these zombie preparedness things is so they could fucking like prepare for like, what if we got to go into Nigeria or something? Pretty much. And and do some combat operations there, but we don't want to piss off you know, the Nigerian government by looking like we're preparing to do that. So, so instead, pretended we'll pretend it's, we're pretending we're doing a zombie preparedness drill instead because that can't piss anyone off. But really, it was just preparedness for like a big civilian population with no weapons. Yes. Yeah, that's basically what it was. Yeah, about. basically. What a bunch of shit. I know, right? <laughs> how to manage them a lot better. But, you know, the, the good news is, though, that if a zombie apocalypse ever did actually happen, at least there'd be some people who were prepared. Yeah. We've got a Nigerian contingency plan. Just pretend they're Nigerians, boys. Remember, <laughs> remember contingency plan 888888-11. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, suppose a zombie apocalypse really happened. Do you think you'd survive? No. A team of students in the Department of Physics and Astronomy, why that, at the University of, oh shit. You know what I want, Paul, TJ? Any any suggestions on how I should pronounce that? Like, like, Leicester? Leicester. I'm going to go with that. Oh, dude. Took this question seriously. You're not going to like the answer. Um, in their first version of the model, they assumed the zombies could infect but not kill people who were uninfected. I don't know what, why would they assume you can't kill them? But they assumed there was a 90% probability that an infected person who met a zombie would be infected. An uninfected person. Uninfected, yes. Yeah. And the zombies died after 20 days if they did not feed. They set the population of the world at 7.5 billion, which is very close to current real-world estimates. The model was started with one zombie at day zero. Nothing much happens for about three weeks as the number of zombies slowly multiplies. And then the fecal matter hits the whirling cooling device. Just say the shit hits the fan, right? Yeah, come on, man. On or about day 20, the zombie population begins a meteoric ex- exponential increase that is mirrored in a decline in the uninfected population. Most of the world's population is wiped out over the next three weeks. On day 100, there are 181 uninfected survivors on the planet. You're probably not one of them. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, pretty drastic. Uh, that's the grimmer version of the model. They did uh, add some new things to the model. Uh, they realized people aren't going to sit around waiting to be infected. They're going to fight back. Uh, they're also going to get better at avoiding zombies as time goes on, although they're going to have to learn to do this quickly. 
Finally, if they can survive long enough, people can replace some of their losses by having babies. So the students published a second paper in the Journal of Physics Special Topics that took all of those factors into account. So they added a parameter to the model that gives each person a 10% chance of killing a zombie when they meet, which I think their chances are a little higher. Yeah, than I mean, depending on the zombie, though. Uh, they modeled people's increasing sophistication at avoiding zombies by replacing the 90% probability of infection when an encounter takes place with a parameter that decreases the chance of infection as the number of uninfected declines. Uh, births were modeled by assuming that the uninfected are equally divided between males and females, which I don't think is necessarily likely. Uh, not all the new factors benefit the uninfected. The zombies were also given some love. Their lifespan without feeding was increased from 20 days to one year. Uh, the uninfected do much better in this scenario. The exponential increase in the number of zombies is delayed by about 10 days, but then it rises exponentially as before. However, at 100 days, there are still roughly 200 million uninfected left alive. Yeah, still not great. You're still probably not one of those. You're still probably dead. I think that uh, some... I mean, I don't understand why they think that 90% of the people who encounter a zombie are going to get fucking infected, though. So what, what, do, what do you think your odds I mean, of surviving... If there are, I mean, TJ, which, what, do you, what are your odds of surviving the zombie apocalypse? Um, I'm going to... I mean, like, low. Low? I don't think that what any of What would you actually do, though? Like, I think the... Go, go on, sorry. What would you actually do, TJ? If you, were, if you were thrown in that situation right now, would you just blow your brains out? Would you try to survive? What I mean, I'd try do? to survive, but I don't think I'd actually survive. I think I'd be pretty fucked. You, you just be, you, you think you'd just be incompetent and be killed? I mean, the first thing that's going to happen, obviously, I'm going to board myself into this fucking house. You know, I, I, I'm going to fucking basically secure myself in here, and then I'm just going to slowly fucking go through the fucking whatever food supply is in here and to then, the point where it's totally exhausted. Then I'm going to be forced by desperation to head outside and that's when you're fucked, basically. And that's when I'm for sure just dead, because by then it's already gotten way out of control. Uh, I think, like, that 90%, like, infected thing might be, like, breathing the, the air that the zombie is, like... Well, if there's around. an airborne zombie yeah, then fucking fine. virus, then we're just... Uh, there's uh, no fucking surviving Paul, that. what about you? Would you just blow your brains out? What would you do? I have a unique plan for the zombie apocalypse, okay. actually. It's called, if you can't beat them, join them and eat them. <laughs> I'm going to run out with the hopes of becoming a zombie myself and joining the winning team. Sorry, guys. I'm going to go zombie. And before you say that sounds crazy, being a zombie would be pretty fucking cool, I think. No more worrying about bullshit bills and shit. It really reduces your life down to the basic elemental shit. I need to eat and I need to find more shit to eat. I'm fine with that. I'm cool with those two worries in exchange for, like, credit scores and fucking taxes and all car registrations well, well, mention, and all this bullshit. Not to mention being a survivor, dude. I mean, you're going to be in constant fear and terror. If you're a zombie, that's all taken away. You're just yeah. Gonna... You ain't scared of shit. In fact, you're fucking excited when you see a person. You're like, oh, yeah, that's dinner. Fuck yeah. Ring the fucking tri <laughs> yeah, triangle, man. Social anxiety cured, Gone. Bitch. Depression, gone. Like, anything I suffer from, dude, any physical ailment, dude, that goes in the back. Because zombies don't feel that shit. I'd be walking around with one arm and wouldn't even know it. It's awesome. Like, why wouldn't you join the zombies? They're the next evolution of humanity, dude. All right. So uh, for, all, for us weirdos who don't want to be zombies and want to survive as humans for some reason, here's some tips. Uh, clear the room. There's nothing worse than stepping into a room only to be set upon by a horde of brain-hungry zombies. A team of four-armed shooters can easily clear a room if they all stand against the nearest wall, one body in each corner, and two in the middle. How are you going to fucking get that arrangement in a fucking zombie-infested room? Good question. Never turn your back on the enemy. Yeah, yeah, don't turn your back on the zombie. I mean, that's, that's a fucking pretty basic kinda, thing. Seems pretty obvious. The fine line. For those lucky enough to amass a relatively large army of live humans, the fine line is the best way to fend off roving zombie hordes. Simply form two lines of armed persons, one line in the front of the other. Have the front line shoot while the back of the line holds. Uh, when the front line runs out of ammo, the back line steps in while the front line reloads. So this is kind of like Civil War musket fighting. Yeah. Tragically, the uh, squad's training zombie, Billy the Hunter, died while the squad demonstrated this technique. Okay. Like volley fire back in the day. Yeah. Like Civil War shit. Zombies are the least of your worries. Oh, shit, dude. 
You got to deal with, yeah, because you got to deal with the other fucking roving yet another, hordes of humans. Yet another reason to join the Z horde, dude. Because I, I don't. I, like, I'm going to join this one so gonna I can stab with them big titties. Right like there. zombies are loyal to other zombies, dude. They don't stab other zombies. Yeah, in you the don't back see zombies shit. fighting shit. So choose your weapon wisely as well. Because, uh, you know, you don't want to fucking be stuck with a shit weapon. So TJ Paul is a zombie, dude. He ran out of the street, and became a zombie. Would you kill him? Oh, hell He'd yeah. He'd have to if he wanted to survive. Yeah, I mean, because what's he... If he was he... smart, though, he'd just let me nibble on him a little bit and join the fucking club. He's going to be fucking trying to kill me, so I think it's fair. But, I mean, like, if I lose, I still get to be a zombie, so Yeah, whatever. we get to be zombie bros, dude. But uh, you know what? Not everyone gets to really be a zombie, because some people get devoured by zombies. Well, you, most people tend to only get bit once and then escape. I'm assuming yeah. I don't get overwhelmed by a huge horde and, like, totally yeah. Yeah, see, fucking... That, see, that really apart. just sucks. Can you just get eaten totally, then that, that's the end of you. Maybe you just wake up as a fucked up, mostly eaten zombie, and you're just like... Bleh. Yeah, you're one of the heads on the side. Like, oh, I'd use the zombies as a fucking weapon. Uh, windows are not your friend. I guess because zombies are pretty prone to just popping through those motherfuckers. I mean, like, if there's a zombie apocalypse, you ain't got to tell me to stay away from the fucking window, dude. Yeah, no shit, dude. I know. Don't get stuck with a gas guzzler. I'm not going to be traveling around a lot, probably, you know? I mean, but does this mean that all the, like liberals that bought all the fucking hybrid cars and shit are going to be better equipped to survive than all the rednecks with their big gas guzzling diesel trucks and shit they i think that be. i think that uh what's going to happen is uh the liberals and the conservatives will have to get their together to be like okay you guys have all the fuel efficient vehicles we have all the guns let's form a fucking alliance i mean the old world that we were fighting about is pretty get much getting the dead prius anyway. patricia we're out of here the coalition uh, it's going to bring people together. That's the beauty of the zombie apocalypse. Um, something about TNT. I don't know. Animals, friend or foe. I think if you got a fucking ruthless ass attack dog or something, that might be good. Yeah, but what if they can also be zombified? Yeah, I mean, that kind of depends. Like, if the, if, the, if the animals are immune to the zombification, that's like some then Resident that's Evil useful shit. shit. Yeah, but if you've got a bunch of attack dogs and shit, one of them could come down with it and you don't know it, and then all of a sudden you've got an army of fucking flesh-hungry Doberman zombies. I also, mean, dude, the dogs might draw a, attention, because dogs bark a lot, dude. That's true. Maybe you fucking draw the zombie horde to your house. Oh, that's fucking- true. You know, the dog's fucking barking and shit. The zombie's like, ooh, there's some shit over there. That's something alive to eat. They come fucking eat your attack dogs, and they fucking eat your ass next, TJ. That's true. You got to think of that. You have to train your dogs. You have to have an attack gorilla. But, but TJ, like wouldn't, you, wouldn't you be happy if that happened, though? Because you'd be the sa- eating, There's dude. actually an attack gorilla on here. So. See, that's what I'm saying, dude. They, well, yeah, I, don't, I want the attack gorilla. That sounds Oh, good. yeah. I mean, this is one thing I never understand about these fucking shows where it's like, okay, you don't, we can't let the zombies bite us, but they all just go around and like... You know, like short sleeve shirts and shit. Yeah, it's like get some armor. Yeah, like armor your ass up so a zombie can't fucking bite you easily, d- dumbass. Get some can like heavy canvas clothing that it's hard to bite through and shit. It, it, it's like uh, I also see them get covered in blood and shit. Wouldn't they get infected from all that blood getting in the micro? That's true. Shit? That happens a lot too. Like when people are going on a zombie killing spree, they'll be lopping heads off, but all that zombie blood's hitting them in the face and shit. Like, isn't that a problem? Yeah, you need some, like, real protection for that shit. Twigs and fuck. Sorry, fish and berries ain't gonna fucking fix that problem, huh, Stevie? Twigs and berries. Twigs and berries. Twigs and berries. Twig and, twig and berries. My old twig, twig and berries. Old twig and berries. The science behind zombies. Could it really happen? Maybe. Oh, shit. Could it really happen? It could happen, dude. What do you think? Uh, for some reason, the concept of zombies, the living dead, the undead, or whatever you'd like to call them, fascinates humanity. The attraction has garnered a considerable boost in the past 10 years with the popularity of shows like The Walking Dead and the movies like Zombieland, Shaun of the Dead, Warm Bodies, and 28 Days Later. Deep down, most of us know there's no such things as zombies. Or is there? Dun, dun, dun! I bet you one of the things they're going to bring up is like those cordyceps and shit. First, yeah, they will. First, let's take a look at how the ideas of, of zombies began. Zombies first came to life ooh, in Haiti during the 17th and 18th centuries. Hundreds of slaves were taken from Africa and transported to St. Dominique, present-day Haiti, which was ruled by the French. Deaths among the slaves were high. Initially, it was believed that once slaves died, they would be freed from slavery and returned back to Africa. That's weird. But throughout time, the legends evolved into the practice of voodoo, specifically Bokar with Haitians believing that the undead were bewitched to perform evil tasks. That went from a really hopeful thing to a really dark thing. It's like, 
it, was, it started off as like, when we die, we go back to Africa. To when we die, we are still enslaved to perform evil tasks as the undead. And the uh, word zombie is thought to derive from the Congo word nzamba, nzambi, nzambi, uh, meaning spirit of a dead person. For the most part, stories about the undead were re- relegated to Haiti, but soon evolved into pop culture with the first film, White Zombie, and eventually the cult classic Night of the Living Dead. And it just became more popular. So, um, let's talk about the real, uh, real life zombies, quote unquote. Uh, okay, down in the nitty gritty, how could a dead body function? If you're a, a fan of The Walking Dead, you might remember that the walkers, zombies, were a result of neurons firing in the brain, reanimating the body, and leaving not much else functioning aside from the requirement to eat. But could a person wander around with a shuffling gait, catatonic, focused on solely one thing, food? Believe it or not, yes. But nobody said a dead body could. However, there are several diseases that leave its victims with zombie-like traits. Damn it. So basically, no, is what they're saying. Well, no. What they're saying is is that it might not actually be dead bodies. It might just be like like 28 days later where it's yeah. a yeah, virus. You're, yeah, you're that infe- infected. Yeah, so you're, an infected person. Basically, all critical thinking skills are removed. You're just a walking, violent fucking killing machine, or you're, you're just simply moving around to seek food. That's all you can do. You're, you're just reduced to your most primitive form. Uh, so there's diseases that pretty much put your whole body um, under the charge of your amygdala, which is, uh, or sorry, amygdala, am- amygdala, amygdala, amygdala. It's not amygdala, uh, something else. But apparently, if that fucking uh, shuts, if if you if that's the only thing working, then you're just basically acting on fucking pure instinct at that point. Yeah, you're just like food, sleep, shit, piss. Um. There's another disease called encephalitis lethargica. I got that. It has lethargic right in it. An extremely rare condition. Cummings said there was an outbreak connected with the Spanish flu epidemic in 1918. People who suffered from this began to hallucinate, enter a stupor, and become catatonic. However, if they were uh, stimulated with something as benign as a tap on the shoulder, they went berserk. That sounds cool. Uh Uh-oh. Whoa, dude. As well, they had shuffling gates and even motor defects. Cool. Uh, Cummings doesn't exactly believe in zombies, but he's illustrated people who are ill can enter zombie-like states that render them almost lifeless. In the case of encephalitis lethargica, it sounds like the rage virus in 28 days later. later. There are real things out there that affect the brain to alter behavior where you do socially unacceptable things. Maybe chow down on someone's arm. That'd be awesome. I'm down with that. Oh, oh! So now you're on my team. Now you're on Team Z. I mean, I think. Oh, that's, okay. A uh, welcome. To, uh, no, it's okay, TJ. It's okay. I, it sounds welcome pretty to cool. The fold. Welcome to the zombie army, dude. TJ, let's be honest. I think Paul dude. already has this because you know it's like sometimes you'll see Paul there in a catatonic state, and then you say, "Hey, Paul," and he's like, Bruh, "What do you want?" Yeah, that's true. So <laughs> I might have it. TJ, you know he's your got ass. It, dude. He's you know got your it. ass would just fucking give in to being a zombie. You would try to survive for a couple days. You'd go through that fucking, like, I want to live, and you'd be scared. You'd be like, you know what? I'll let a zombie bite me real quick. It'll hurt, but then I'll be a zombie within, like, a day. I'll let Paul bite me. Fine. He was yeah. right. Paul, join, bite me. I'll join Team Z. With <laughs> you know, you know, You'll have me chained up in the kitchen wondering what to do with me, and then finally you'll just succumb and let me bite you. Someone in the chat said uh, that it'd be like, I'd be going. I'd be out in the world. I'd be like, "The fuck? Why is Wendy's closed?" He says just before the zombies eat him. <laughs> Probably. I'd be like trying to Wendy's get Wendy's doesn't open. Wendy's. Why need, are you closed? Need baconator. <laughs> Hello. I'm hungry. Uh, hey, do you work here? Oh, <laughs> <Ugh>, how? <laughs> it's a lawsuit, buddy. All right. So. Uh, another fucking fantastical scenario. Monsters. Big ass giant monsters. So we're talking like Godzilla. We're talking Mothra. I'm, I'm specifically going for like the God the Godzilla, yeah. That so Fuck city yeah, destroying dude. monsters. Yes, a big ass city destroying fucking monster. Now that would also be one like hell the monsters show. from Rampage in theaters June twenty seventh. <laughs> Go away. Is that, re- is, that, is that the real release date? No, I just made that up. I'm, I was about to say, like, man, if you know the actual release date of that shit, I'm going to be so mad. Uh, anyway, uh, what do you, so apparently the U.S. Army 
Apparently, people engage in a lot of hypothetical bullshit other than just us, because apparently the U.S. Army has commented on whether they're confident if they could stop Godzilla or not. No, nah, fuck no, dude. Godzilla would win. And they he's say bored. they say they're pretty confident they could stop a real life Godzilla. No, uh, uh-uh. so here's what they say. Uh, I'm gonna make this. This is fucking written so fucking small. I'm gonna make it a little bigger. Uh, Sergeant Major James Dever offers some insight on how the U.S. military would handle a real Godzilla attack. Thankfully, Godzilla has, until now, been a product of fantasy, and we've never suffered in real life attacks from a giant radioactive dinosaur. Uh, But what if we did? Godzilla, 2014's military uh, technical advisor, uh, Sergeant Major James Deaver, was asked how the U.S. military would hypothetically take on the monster and, more importantly, whether they could do it. Despite the military usually amounting to no more than cannon fodder in these types of films, Deaver is confident that the U.S. military could stop a real-life Godzilla no. attack. Godzilla would fucking That's win. That's bullshit. Yeah. The military would be very successful, he said, confidently. <laughs> adding, with the manpower and equipment we have, we'd definitely be successful in taking down Godzilla. He said the U.S. would quick would be quick to mobilize all of its military forces from the Navy to the Air Force to even ground troops, and they would simply be able to overwhelm the monster with numbers. No, dude, there's no way. Godzilla would whoop their ass. Godzilla would <laughs> fucking just destroy them, dude. He would fucking crush their fucking tanks. He would, what is it he has, like the uh, plasma breath or something? Uh, atomic. Yeah, yeah atomic, atomic plasma breath, breath yeah. 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 Yeah, dude, he would fucking do that. He, all these fucking t- like, jets would fly and Godzilla like... <laughs> He'd fucking shoot those out of the fucking sky. Why, 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 wouldn't, why wouldn't we just dorp a nuke on him, dude? Just dorp wouldn't a fat matter, nuke dude. right on his head. He fucking feeds on the radiation, dude. He'd be like, Oh, yeah, Thanks, that's right. Dude. He's radioactive. Yeah, he's already radioactive. He'd be all he's, like, already, he's like a nuclear lizard already. It God. would just make him bigger. He would fucking swallow that shit. He'd be like, mm-hmm. I mean, Thanks, in, in the original Japanese version... He was created by nuclear fucking right. weapons testing. on the Bikini Islands. Yeah. yeah, all the U.S. weapons testing made a Komodo dragon turn into a Godzilla. Uh, does Godzilla actually get more powerful the more radiation he gets? I don't know. Um, I wouldn't want to test it, though. Or wait. No, I think in the actually in the original version, he, he was like just freed from some uh, prehistorical oh, was he? slumber or something. There's different versions. I remember in one of them, he, he it was because of that. Yeah, I think that was shit. actually the 1998 version they went oh. with that narrative in. But still, it was all about nuclear testing and shit. And, like, obviously, a nuke did nothing but just wake him up from his slumber. And he does have... Uh, he has atomic breath, so he can, like, literally shoot nucle- a nuclear weapon out of his fucking mouth. So... Hmm. I don't know. I don't think... The, I don't think... I don't, I don't know if the, the nuke would do it. That's just too easy. Um, anyway, he did, however, see a couple of complications in a potential military versus Godzilla Godzilla showdown, in particular Godzilla's fiery atomic breath. There it is. And if the battle took place in a densely populated city, once he's in the city, our major concern are all the civilians, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, The military would put in their combined effort to move all the civilians out before we could engage him. As for the potential of using atomic weapons on the monster, Deaver said he would probably only be a very last resort as the decision would have to come from the president and would only be used after civilians were evacuated. Another bunch <laughs> of bullshit. <laughs> sure. Show up, be like, uh, there's a Godzilla, nuke him. Uh, I'm not as confident as this uh, military that they could defeat a creature such as Godzilla. May- look, but- I'll say this. Maybe they could defeat Godzilla, but it, I think it would take way more than they would think, and I think it would be catastrophic loss of human life. Luckily, it's pretty much impossible for a creature like Godzilla oh, yeah, to there's actually no exist. I just love how this guy completely just removes the contingency that they would order a strike when there were civilians around. That's and not just to ridiculous. mention, dude, in the last Godzilla movie, Godzilla was the fucking good guy, dude. So fuck this guy. Godzilla yeah, fucking saved the goddamn day. The U.S. military was like, oh, we don't know what to do. Godzilla, please help us. Dude, if Godzilla popped... Godzilla's like, all right, bitches, I got this. If Godzilla popped up in New Jersey and was making his Godzilla way across over to New York, you're telling me they wouldn't drop a bomb on Jersey? Dude. Oh sure, bullshit. Uh, if Godzilla In destroyed, if Godzilla destroyed New Jersey, he'd be doing this country a fucking favor. So that's what I mean. But then, I mean, but if he was headed towards New York, oh, okay. Well, at that point, then yeah, they got to yeah, stop, gotta him. stop him. What would y'all do if y- y'all were like? In New York, and Godzilla just popped out of the fucking harbor. What would I? And you I mean, were, like, you, what could you? What fucking, would I do? What would you do? Uh, flee in terror. Yeah, get the fucking. <laughs> like, how would you flee in terror? How would you escape his destruction? Any way I could. Yeah, like any fucking way possible. 
I actually have a contingency plan for this, too. Really? I would go, holy fucking shit! And I'd run for about 20 feet and get winded and then hide in a dumpster. <laughs> And That's then Godzilla steps on the dumpster and you're dead. <laughs> well, whatever. I mean, what's the chances he's going to step on my dumpster? How many tens yeah, of thousands of dumpsters are there? one of the buildings York, he man. knocks over and crushes will just crush Paul. Yeah, the but dumpster. then the dumpster might protect me so oh, I can be shit, rescued dude. later. <laughs> or, no, you just, just, or just die death. in a fucking disgusting <laughs> New York dumpster filled with hobo puke. <laughs> Maybe there'd be a hot eat, homeless eat chick in there or something. I don't know. have to. I'd be down there eating like sloppy ass rotten banana peels and drinking the garbage juice. Watch and shit. this, like, a baby diaper. <laughs> oh, man, I hope somebody yeah, fucking nutrients. digs me out. <laughs> the nutrients out of that bag. Whatever. At least I didn't get eaten by a giant lizard, though. There All right. So, uh, aliens. Another way the oh, world. Oh, cool, could end. dude. Uh, this is from Stephen Hawking. Uh, has uh, you know he famously warned us. He's dead now, though. Dead now. Probably, probably killed, killed by aliens. Yeah, probably killed by aliens. One was- day we might receive a signal from a planet like this. He's talking about. You know, uh, one of these potential alien worlds. Oh, shit, dude. But we should be wary of answering back. Meeting an advanced civilization could be like Native Americans encountering Columbus. That didn't turn out so well. I mean, I've got to say it could be substantially weirder than that. Like we're, we're like we're placing all these human attributes on an alien species, and chances are, if there is an intelligent alien species out there, it evolved way differently than us. Probably has way different ways of dealing with, uh, you know, other species. Like this idea that they would have this this human kind of desire to conquer and subjugate us. Like we don't even know if they would consider that. You know what I mean? Like we don't we don't know what to think about these things. And it could be considerably weirder than Columbus meeting the Native Americans because those were still human beings. I think they're human space beings. pricks, dude. I think they want to conquer us. Given the current state of our home planet and indeed our species, it can seem a bit surplus to needs. Two needs? That doesn't make any Two sense. Two needs. Why do these people. Two can, needs. Does no one fucking spell check this shit? It can seem a bit surplus to needs to speculate on whether extraterrestrials are going to one day come and eat us or do anything else unpleasant. Do you like the Twilight Zone, dude? The cookbook, dude. To serve man! It's a cookbook! Ah! Nonetheless, the question of whether there's anyone or anything out there that might ever show up to try to cause trouble does seem to come around again and again and again. For example... It's become a bit of a perennial topic for Stephen Hawking to mention. And he's not alone among serious uh, scientists in speculating at the outcome of such so a So a lot of these scientists don't think that they, they don't feel like the Vulcans are showing up, dude. They think the fucking Borg are showing up or something. Um, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, like, they might even think they're doing us a favor by annihilating us. They might have a totally different, like, they might be like, being annihilated by another galactic species is the greatest honor that can be bestowed upon life in this universe. We'd be like, no, please, don't kill us. And they're like, oh, humans, you are too humble. Please accept this gift of death that we... No, 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 we like being alive. Oh, humans. (laughs) No one likes being alive. Uh, but contrary to many Hollywood-style sci-fi tales, I doubt that what an alien species needs are most of the usual tropes. Water, what, one of the most abundant compounds in the cosmos? Human slaves. Seriously, you can traverse interstellar space and you need slaves? Or some mystical life force to be drained from us all? No, just no. What about just massive amounts of raw building material? Like, what if they look at planets like ours as just a big harvesting point for to cons- to build their giant machinery and support their Dude, fleet what and if, shit? What if the aliens just show up and just, like, mine our planet? They, they don't even give a fuck about us. Like, we try to attack them. They just blow us up like the ants we are, dude, or just it, kill us. It's like they see our trees and they're like, oh, we can get some good, like, wood furniture out of this shit. Have right you here. guys heard of Nick Pope, the UFO expert? Yes. Yes, dude. No, I haven't. No. Yes, you have, Paul. <laughs> Come on. Don't be, don't be shy. So here's Nick Pope, right here, motherfuckers. This guy, Nick fucking Pope. He's dude. a fucking UFO expert. He's gonna tell us um, how we would fare in an alien invasion, and he knows. He's an expert. So the first thing you should know is that your intelligence isn't gonna cut it. Oh shit! Okay. Dude. The xenomorphs in the alien movies are a lot smarter than us, but they're lethal. Okay. So. Um, his argument is that human, human beings only been around 200,000 years, and civilization's only a, thousand, a couple, few thousand years old. Sharks, by comparison, they've been around for 450 million years, so the jury's out on whether being smart is truly 
a good survival strategy, all right? What? I mean, I don't disagree. But here's here's the part here's the fucking part I love. There is no plan. Despite what some people in the UFO and conspiracy theory community think, the government doesn't have an alien invasion war plan. If they did, I'd probably have been the person asked to draft well, it. Well, he is the Nick Pope. Oh, God, Because he's dude. Nick Pope. Uh, how much more full of yourself can you be? Alien experts. If they had asked me... He has two articles. If there was a plan, then they would have... I the guy they asked. Consulted me. How about they consult Brent Spiner, dude? <laughs> yeah, he knows. <laughs> the radio astronomers at SETI... Uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, Institute have protocols for what to do if they detect a signal. While NASA's Office of Planetary Protections has the task of protecting Earth's bios- biosphere from contamination from any alien life forms that might be brought back after space missions. In the Alien franchise, the company, the Wayland Utani Corporation, wanted to acquire an alien for their bioweapons division. Clearly, like NASA, they should have been more cautious about this. Oh, shit. So this is, now he's fucking talking about the, the Alien franchise and shit. Uh, I guess the whole thing is about the Alien franchise. Like, how would we survive this if xenomorphs were real? I think we'd be pretty fucked. I mean, they're like the ultimate killing machines. No hope. I mean, it depends, like, if we know about it. But I mean, if, like, a, a queen sets up shop somewhere in the wilderness and starts cranking out eggs and shit, I think we're done. Yeah. And we don't know about it, you know what I mean, until it's too late. By then, you got like thousands of aliens oh, yeah. running through oh, the yeah. fucking woods of different types and shit. Yeah, because they, they fucking impregnated rabbits and fucking cougars and uh, all kinds of shit. I don't know if we have Nick Pope, dude. Yeah, Nick Pope's here to defend us. Okay, we're if good. If Nick Pope fucking writes the fucking survival but strategy. It's, it's, it's time. The, the, I think the military do actually does have like a alien invasion no, they don't, fucking Stevie. thing. No, they don't. You've been Stevie. high Stevie. against Stevie. He's smoking the fucking reefer, dude. If they did, they would have consulted Nick Pope. Yeah, Nick Pope was Nick not Pope consulted, so clearly if they, there is it. no plan. If they do have a plan, you know, they, they didn't they fucking take it seriously. They would have asked me to write it! So it's time, guys. I don't know how this ended up in the fictional category, but it's time for the actually the most plausible end-time scenario of all. Does anyone want to guess what it is? The dildo apocalypse. Close. Okay. Scotty? I'm going to say... Oh, dude. Fucking super AIDS, dude. Super AIDS. Super Stevie, AIDS. what do you think? Genetic deviance? Genetic deviance. I don't know what that means, but there's a little thing that you might have heard of called the rapture. Oh, super shit. Super AIDS, dude, but shit. Scotty was right. Super AIDS, a.k.a. the rapture. The rapture. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. With the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So it is kind of like zombies, dude. Kind of. Yeah. All the, all, but all the Christians are going to be the zombies. And they're, and they're looking forward to it, too, just like Paul. Uh-oh. The event described by Paul. Ooh, eerie coincidence. Shut up. In First Thessalonians is known to premillennialists as the rapture. Yeah. It is viewed as occurring prior to the millennial re- reign of Christ. It therefore should not be confused with the resurrection of the unsaved, which occurs at the end of the millennium. Okay. Premillennialists differ as to the timing of the rapture and generally hold to one of three positions, though there are others. Okay, so these are the different kinds of raptures. Okay. okay. First, you got your pre-tribulation rapture position which states that Christ will return for his church prior to the seven day tribulation period thus believers will not experience the reign of the antichrist so this is the the kind of the, oh, the classic people just disappear one day yeah, right they're just gone they all don't... the believers get magicked up to heaven and then the rest of us got to deal with the rapture yeah we, 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 we get to deal with the fucking antichrist dude Sweet. oh yeah that's gonna be pretty cool though I think it's probably gonna be Paul uh, maybe Stevie. That'd be a curveball. The mid-tribulation rapture position states that Christ will return for his church at the midpoint of the seven-year tribulation period. The second half of the tribulation is seen as the time when God's wrath is poured out upon a Christ-rejecting world. Since the church is exempt from God's wrath, the church will be raptured prior to this pouring out of God's wrath. So that's like uh, good behavior. Like right, prison. like God comes back, Jesus comes back, everybody knows it, 
and we start to experience that and then right before the shit really hits the fan poof all the good people disappear and the rest of us are left here to suffer the tribulation the post-tribulation rapture position states that the rapture will occur at christ's second coming the church will be present on earth during the entire tribulation period but will not experience god's wrath it will however experience the antichrist persecution all three positions are acceptable within Orthodox Christianity. It is not an issue to break fellowship over. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> so it's good to know. Any crazy version of this bullshit you want to believe, it's fine. All three of these crazy bullshit narratives are acceptable. Okay, so... <laughs> that makes no sense. Nothing really matters. So, so this is your, supposed to be the foundation of, the, of your belief in existence and all, your question to everything and all answers, but it's okay to differ on... How the rapture is going to work? Like, well, I think it's gonna everyone's gonna go up before. Well, everyone's gonna be down here on Earth, but they're not gonna suffer God's wrath. We're just gonna see everyone else that's bad and wicked. I love these suffering little covenants God's wrath. between different kinds of religious people. It almost boils down to like, okay, we we all know this is bullshit, so go ahead and believe whatever you want to believe. <laughs> it's all right, man. Not, we ain't gonna we ain't gonna let this one make or break things, yeah, guys. No reason to break fellowship over that. You know, a lot of Christians though are concerned when I am raptured. What's going to have to happen to Mr. Fluffykins? The pets, yeah. yeah. What about Ooh. the pets? What about little Dinor and Squeaks and Sal and Eugene? Well, we don't have to worry because none I mean, of us are getting raptured. But yeah, we ain't being raptured, dude. Come if on. we were Christians, Ooh. we'd have to worry about them. Like, what happens I'll, to I'll the animals? TJ converts to Christianity tomorrow. Luckily, there's after the rapture pet care. Oh, finally, dude. That is so awesome. The after the rapture pet care story. So it started off as a joke, but then they saw that Christians were like, actually, that'd be useful. So now it's a real thing. Uh. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's based in New Orleans, too, I think. While planning our system, we thought about, oh, I guess they were just inspired by New Orleans. We thought about the stories of pet rescues in New Orleans after Katrina. Imagine how many pets would have been saved if there had been a database of pets and volunteers activated immediately. This is something we could do for Christian-owned pets. Carol began recruiting other non-Christian animal lovers nationwide to volunteer uh, to take care of left-behind pets wait, 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 if wait, the rapture wait, occurs. Wait, 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 wait. Yes. So the people that are not worthy of being raptured, they're okay with them taking care of their, of their beloved pets. So they're like, look, this is an issue. I want someone to watch after Mr. Fluffykins, but they didn't deserve to be raptured, and I'm okay with that, and that's all right. And they're obviously not godly or good, and they're basically, you know, they rejected Christ. But they're okay to watch my dog while I'm in heaven. Well, I just love the idea that if this whole like huge tragedy happens and the tribulation starts and a bunch of people disappear, that like these people that signed up to do this are like, what are the chances that any of them are going to show None. up for, for work? They're going to have other shit on their plate, like fucking the Antichrist throwing fireballs at them and shit. You know what I mean? They got the whole tribulation <laughs> to suffer through. I'm glad you mentioned that because, uh, you know, one of the first things you got to do, I mean, obviously, if all the Christians on earth disappear, we got to be like, oh, shit, maybe there was something to this whole Christianity thing. So you're going to need to know how to do, you know, you're going to want to save your soul so you can get into heaven at well, that yeah, point. Well, yeah, at right? that point, sure, yeah. So, uh, you know, here's a little guide on how to do that. Uh, this is a question. If I were left behind on Judgment Day, can I still be saved? Okay, so here's the Bible answer. No. No, uh, no it's not No. That was, that was the Stevie answer. There are at least two very serious events for non-Christians in God's prophetic future. The first one is the rapture, and the next one is judgment. So there's a seven-year window between those two things, depending on which version of this shit you believe. Well, there shit, are other dude. serious events, but these are probably the most important, okay? So first things first. Uh, the rapture will come unexpectedly. Christians will be removed from the world and non-Christians will be left. Christians will join all of the men and women who have believed in God since the world was created. After the rapture occurs, many non-Christians will realize the Bible is true and turn to God. Yet many men and women will still think that they need uh, to serve God by doing good deeds in order to please him. But God has already told us that he does not care about our good deeds. Here's what he said about, says about our good deeds. There is none who does good. There is not even one. All right. Oh, there, there you go. Well, that frees me up. God is saying that we cannot do any good deeds that will gain his favor. He does not like our good deeds because he considers them to be filthy rags. Okay. <laughs> what? Yeah, God's a prick. So those who are left behind will not be able to gain God's favor by doing good deeds. That's bu no. Good Blind deeds. Blind obedience. We need our sins forgiven in order to gain favor with God. This is called being saved from our sins. That can only happen by believing in Jesus. 
All right. So I don't know how you you decide Christianity is true and start believing in the Bible, okay. but somehow don't accept Jesus. Yeah. But. So all this shit happens. The totality of the event has occurred. Uh, who at that point is not a Christian? <laughs> I mean, so here's a little post rapture guide. Uh, it's kind of long, but um, of the seven seals, this dude. is just telling oh, you shit. what's going to happen. I mean, I I don't know why you need all that because this is supposed to be a guide. All right, so here's some tips. Don't take the mark of the beast. Too okay. late. If you accept the mark of the beast, you're damned as you have chosen Satan as your eternal master. You will go to hell if you take it. There is no forgiveness. So that's don't, if you'd get the mark, you're done. No, no. Yeah. So no, don't, do it. don't get the mark of the beast. Whatever you do, you got to not get that mark of the beast. Oh, dude. Did you remember when we were fucking kids? Our fucking... Yes. Oh, God, our dad's... Um, uh, his wife at, our, at the time, like, she was like... The mark of the beast will come. They'll put, they'll put a chip in your hand. There's going to be a chip in your hand. Well, that's what it says here, too. It says uh, yeah, the mark of the beast will likely be either a tattoo or an implantable yep. chip technology. That's what they believe. There's going to be an implantable chip that was going to go in your hand or somewhere I mean, in your that body. That shit's already happening, dude. If presented with the option of taking the mark of the beast or being killed, choose death. <laughs> choose death. God will strengthen you to accept the punishment if you choose him. All who refuse to accept the mark or worship the image of the beast will be beheaded in all likelihood. Will uh, sorry, will be beheaded in all likelihood, as in Revelation twenty four. So, don't get the mark. Take the gu- take the guillotine, dude. Uh, let's see what else there is. Um, although this guide is designed to provide you with an overview of events, I in no way claim to know the precise manner in which these things will come to pass. Much of the book of Revelations will only be understood completely when it actually happens. Oh, man, you know, what That's a convenient. fucking cop, what a cop out, dude. What if this all this shit goes down and Satan's like, I'm not even half fucking bad. And you're like, you know what? I'm just going to side with Satan. I can be killed right now and, and, and potentially go to hell, which is supposedly bad, according to fucking the Bible and God and all these Christians. Or maybe heaven's a nonstop fucking party. I mean, uh, hell's a nonstop party and it's going to be great. I mean, doesn't Satan, doesn't Satan want to be worshipped too? On top of that, dude, you could even be a good guy post rapture. You could be like, "Well, God, I saved you know a thousand babies from a horribly burning daycare center." <laughs> that and is but a filthy yeah, rag. God would be like, "You did, Lord. you did nothing but create a pile of filthy rags." It's like, oh, oh shit, <laughs> <clears throat> whoops. That is nothing to me. I am not impressed you by a, your virtue signaling. But Paul, you bitch. can be a total prick and do all those bad deeds. Throughout six, let's say six years, 11 months, you know, 29 days. And on that last day, you go, you know what? I really believe in Jesus. He's my Lord and Savior. And I accept yep. him. Rape and pillage your way yep. through the post rapture. And then right before the fucking Antichrist or Jesus or whoever it is ends it all. Just go, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> you're in heaven. You're done. And you're right there in heaven. Yep. That's it. Right there. You get to skip the line of all the good deed doers, too, that are getting the... the I'm sorry, man. I know you, you, see, you fucking helped save a bunch of old people from a burning old people's home, but you didn't You didn't believe in but Jesus. Paul, but, Paul, you're going to see the same see people... See ya. You're going to see the same people you murdered and pillaged in heaven, dude. You're like, hey, what's up? It's me. Oh, excuse me. Everybody step aside, please. Rape Pillage Master is coming. He's one of the ones that believes in Jesus. Come on, Rape Pillage <laughs> I, Master. Come I on believe. in. I believe. Hey, how are you stupid non-believers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in heaven now. I got now. the fast pass. <laughs> <laughs> I saved a hundred babies. Get Go to hell, you fucking non-Jesus believing in shit. I had more hell. deviant sex than you can fucking imagine in the last few months. But, but I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. So <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in heaven. It's Isn't beautiful. It yeah, you got to love Christianity. You got to love the rapture. Stevie, what do you think about the rapture, brah? I did, it's fucking bullshit. Are you going? No. You probably, going to heaven? Probably not. You're going to take the mark, dude? It depends on what it looks like. Yeah, if it's cool. The mark better be cool. Like, if it's yeah, a tattoo. If, if, if it's like fucking blazing red and shit. And like yeah, and it glows. Yeah, it should like be like, it should like glow in your skin and be like some Roman numeral shit. And it should whisper evil things to you when you hold yeah, it up to your yeah, ear, yeah. too. Like, uh, Kill them all. Kill them all. But if it's like some sort of butterfly Obey tattoo, the I, think dark I'd, one. I, I don't think I'd take it. Like, yeah, if it's if it's faggy, no way, dude. Yeah, he goes like, you got to get the mark of the beast. Turns out it's a butterfly dude. tramp stamp or some shitty tribal looking exact- tattoo or something. Everyone like, here oh. is taking the mark of the beast. It's gonna be like death of the mark. We're all gonna be like, give me the fucking mark, dude. Fuck that. I ain't dying for this bullshit. I ain't. I, I ain't, yeah, I ain't going to the guillotine. Yeah, I ain't dying for fucking Jesus, man. Fuck that shit. Give me the mark right now. 
It's what it's what all these so called Christians, all these people sitting around like, I would die. It's like, yeah, some of you would die. I believe that. But a yeah, lot of you be like a lot of you be like, Mark, give me the fucking mark. The number of the beast. All right. Well, that's pretty much all of the apocalyptic scenarios we we got. Yeah. We covered all the natural ones, all the fucking man made ones. I don't think we're surviving any of this, guys. No, we're fucked, dude. Any of this happens, I think we're done. Well, St- Stevie will be done. Stevie will be fine. Well, I believe in Jesus, so if the rapture happens... You're fine. I'm straight to heaven, so... You have anything to say, Stevie? Oh, I guess Paul's giving you his mic. Uh, so this is the end of the show? This is No, Stevie, it's not the end of the show, Stevie. So I guess Stevie wants to plug his shitty YouTube channel. No. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, I do. What do you mean, no? No, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, go, I, go ahead, I, I Stevie. I had to work today, so... Go ahead, Stevie. What, what's your plug? So, like, I, I, I got this uh, Let's Play channel. Ain't that good, but... Come on over if you if you like to see me talk and bullshit and all that. What's the name of the channel? Under Creations. Let's take a look at it. Under Creations. Let's pull it up, dude. Hey, 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 I, Under Creations. <laughs> oh, Stevie. I am not that good of a content Oh, creator, Stevie. But, but if if y'all just want to chill and hang out. You open the Pandora's box, Stevie. So It's called Under Creations? Yeah. You have 10 subscribers? No, 17. I see 10. 10. You have 10, dude. Oh, wait, that's in some foreign language. They don't even have your shit listed. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Well, what's the URL? Uh, he doesn't even know. Under Creations? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Is it under, like, just spelled U-N-D-E-R? Yeah, under. And then Creations? Yeah. I can't even find this shit, dog. I wouldn't be surprised if I don't show up at all, to be honest. Oh, my God. What's your most? What's the name of your, one of your videos? Filter it by channel, TJ. Yeah, yeah, I got to do that. Because you'll find it then. All right, let's do it. Filter. We're going to show Stevie's I, fucking I, I, channel. Channel. I would not be surprised if I don't show up. Let's see. Primitive technology. Classy girl creations. What the fuck? It's like I, I've actually... What's like, the name of one of your videos? Uh, An actual title. Um, let's see. Um, channel update and complaining. There we go. That's the, that's one I can actually... Under think. creations, channel update and complaining. Yeah. Channel... It's just me p- fucking like playing some RuneScape and talking about some shit. Talk about some shit now. All right, here we go. I think I found it. Seven views. Yeah, j- all seven. All right, dude, let's play it, dude. Here it is. <laughs> let's man. put it on the screen. It- it's got some. Depress- let's do some. Let's do some commentary. Oh right. God, I'm gonna cover my face for this. Um, all right, Paul. I thought might as well do like a. <laughs> What's going on with this? Or update video. Full screen at TJ. To turn off my uh, AC unit. Oh, this is informal, so oh well. I'll just turn it off real quick. Just, <laughs> what? Uh, You're turning your AC off in the I middle of it. To, um... Be sure to check out my gaming channel, dude. I don't Game know about you guys. I don't know why you guys are making fun. This is the best let's play I've ever I, seen. <laughs> dude, my my AC is running. I just One to second. Make this video so I can like. <laughs> You're hitting the mic. Like, like at the time. I think this I, is. I, I, I'm like recording. Stevie's gaming channel is the way the world ends, dude. <laughs> the complaining. Skip, here skip ahead. There. Does Stevie actually do anything? So I thought, you know. All right. Okay. It's, uh, it's just me teleporting and fucking leveling. Oh, and level up. There we go. One more level until super heat item. Uh, uh Stevie, the, the, what but, are you? Um, what? You're not even doing anything. He's he's training his fucking teleport. That's not interesting. You, you want to see him take down a boss or something? You want to see some fighting and action, Stevie? Like it's, it's like, just uh, like me talking about like. Let's go to your channel. Well, you know what, Stevie? I'm gonna subscribe. Look how shitty that is. Deep fat fried is subscribing right now, dude. Look at how fucking shitty that is. Here's our channel. That's ten months ago. You got forty-two views oh, on that one, Steve. Let's see this one. Not good. Really? But he will, you know what? Sad. Somebody who couldn't play this game well wouldn't have been able to get across that ravine. It's just way too loud. loud. Fuck. It's fine. Really? I can hear Is that it. it? What? what? It worked. I guess so. Here's the time of the clock. <gasps> you died, dude. Uh, I don't think it worked. <laughs> I really panicked. What's this music? Why is the music so loud? You know, this commentary is like a whisper, like. 
All right, I'm going to go ahead and add you to the fucking... Um, it is not good. Yeah. This is the best channel. What are you talking about, Stevie? Stevie, this is great. Best look, channel look, look in history. Look at that thumbnail, Stevie. Look at your fucking banner. I'm adding Stevie's channel to the description of this video. Stevie's channel... Go over there now. Subscribe to Stevie and troll him mercilessly. Whoa, dude. What the fuck has happened I here? warned Stevie he's going to be fucking trolling. I, I already know that. Like it was nobody's business. It's like, don't troll Stevie, y'all. Yeah, please don't troll be Stevie. Be respectful. Be and nice stuff. to Stevie. Be like, Stevie, I, we I love wanna you. I want to see some funny shit in the comments. Like, Stevie, we love you. Shit. Say Stevie, this, we love you. All right, you. so you want some... Uh, so you want some comments? All right, let me just fucking read you some comments, I guess, from people. This is the reaction of the people. I want to, I want to hear like how bad they think it is because I think it's fucking horrible. <laughs> Best YouTuber. Yep. No. Nope. Groundbreaking. Wow. Not everyone can have TJ's talent. Yeah. This is dog shit. Yeah, that, I agree with that one. <laughs> A-plus sound design. <laughs> horrible. I loved it. I found it. He's, he needs input, guys. It's horrible. I already... I, no, it's I not, Stevie. Quit selling your fucking self short, Dude, Stevie. Refresh this page, TJ, and see how many subscribers he's already gained. How many have you gained so far? It's up to twenty fucking five. Oh now. shit! There you go, Stevie. Twenty. Moving on up. Like just to tell y'all, I, I've been uh, I've been doing this for like a year now. You know, I didn't want like. TJ and Ooh, no, no. 10 hours ago. Reason why I haven't uploaded a lot lately. Oh shit, dude. Hey everyone, it's uh, Steve uh, here. Just like, goddamn, that sun's bright. Um. Just wanted to do fucking quick, sun being bright. What you gonna do? Quick update video. So why I haven't been uploading a lot lately? Yeah, See, why not, Stevie? Been, like, tell us why, Stevie. Work. There's like, there's like this one and, person. Uh, every time I've gotten home, my I've, videos, and I have because no I've been going full time. I've had enough money to start renovating. Yeah, there is one person watching. That's my own house. So I've replaced all the shitty boards. Sorry for the extreme close up. <laughs> um. On my deck with like some new. Oh, you did all that. <laughs> oh, huh? what, Stevie? You did that. Oh, did you? oh Stevie. What Stevie, the fuck, Stevie. dude? <laughs> oh, no. There was like dude. a crew of guys over there. Stevie, that, did that, that was, shit. worked together. That was that not shit. you. And that's you made not it, your house. You were just like, yeah, man. I replaced all the wards <laughs> on my deck and shit. What? No, 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 <laughs> Stevie. Come on. Oh, you have man. to admit, those boards do. That's like good. Paul being like, I didn't have no pool as a kid, guys. Dude, That's Steve why I'm fat. I should go out to the garage where those dudes did all that work and be like, yeah, so yeah, just day two of tearing down the old studio in your garage, guys. <laughs> 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 I'm winded. <laughs> oh, man, dude. <laughs> Stevie, man. I'm subscribing to this immediately. Yeah, by the dude. Way. Everyone go subscribe to Stevie. Oh, All my right. God, dude. Goodbye. Good Goodbye, night. everybody. Thank you for being patrons. Thanks, Thank guys. you so much. Tell people it was worth it. Good night. If it was. Thank you. Oh. All right. So that's the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. You know, it's uh, been behind the paywall for years. You could have watched this years ago. If you just stop being such a cheapskate little bitch and join the Pessimist Productions fucking Patreon. Just do it. Just fucking do it, goddammit. Come on, it's right down there. Just fucking do it. Quit your fucking, oh, no, I can't afford $7. Yes, you can. Do it. <laughs>